I mean, I don't think there's anybody else in my stream, so. Well, I, that's, that's why I was like, I'm not going to stream to no audience, and nobody is going to come to my stream when Axiom is streaming, so. I gain no benefit from it, and I'm not going to stream regularly enough to. Benefit from it right now, anyway. I won't start streaming regularly till I finish at least ethical leadership in my other four classes. <laughs> All right, there we go. Mostly undead. <laughs> there we go. Hey, everybody, welcome to Delson's stream tonight because nobody else is streaming on this show right now. Um, these two gentlemen here on either side of me. They're going to be playing Dungeons and Dragons with me tonight in a spoopy Halloween special. Uh, it's actually part two. If you missed last week, that's okay. It's on Axiom's archive at twitch.tv slash Axiom XIII. Um, I don't know if Mab has an archive or not, but he can tell you all about it after he introduces himself. Go! I don't! <laughs> uh, hi, I'm MMA Brother. I am tonight's dungeon master extraordinaire, mediocre DM on the planet. Um, I am barely an online personality at all anymore. I used to be used to be a prolific blogger, but I will be again soon-ish. So hopefully you will join me. Uh, in the meantime, follow me on Twitter at ma brotherton. That's where you can learn all about how annoying I am. Hashtag hide. Go, go Axiom, go. Uh, hey, uh, I'm just this guy who tries to stream through a um, multitude of network issues. Um, so, so the stream may be up, it may be down, I don't know, but if you, if you get really sick of trying to watch it over here, head over to YouTube or watch it on Delson's channel at YouTube something, 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 just do a search for Delson. That's right, just do a search for Delson, please, exclamation point, bang! Do it now! I'll put, I'll put a Bitly link in, in your chat, chat Axiom, Axiom, that goes to Delson's uh, YouTube awesome. page. Are you actually, um, are you actually able to stream there, Axiom? Well, as far as I know, the stream is on. Okay, good. Then I will direct uh, people's... It's going to have some issues going up and down all night, I think, yesterday, so... Okay. Feel free to discuss amongst yourselves for as long as you would like. We definitely do not have three to four hours of content left in this game. Awesome! <laughs> That's great! Thanks for the heads up. I'm just going to talk real slow tonight. <laughs> no, I've been trying to... This is, we're going to get super meta here for a moment while there's no one else in the chat. I've been, I've been trying, trying to, to encourage Axiom to spend, spend more time, time just chatting, chatting as, as a way, way to, you know, know, really 
really build up his community on his, 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 his stream. Because okay. nobody cares about watching him do bad at video games. They care about the fact that he's an empathic superhero who can make them feel better about their lives. Yeah, yeah, if only I were. were. That would be wonderful. You are. You have made me feel better about my life once. Did, did, did I, I say, say empathic, empathic superhero? I mean, or twice. Tragically repugnant figure that makes us feel better about our lives. Damn! Um, Shots yeah. fired. Sick I burn. Just, I'm just, just joshing you. <laughs> I see uh, what you did there. Um, I have a very interesting, if you, if you are looking at my stream, either of you, it's a really cool experiment that I'm trying. And for anybody who is not familiar with Delson's stream, I always have to use accessibility software in order to, you guessed it, access the computer because I have low vision. In fact, I have such low vision that I can't see this or this. Or this, if you note in the upper left-hand screen. Or this! In fact, this is difficult to read as well, but now it's much better. Ding. Hey, yeah. Are you sure you don't have any porn in any of your tabs there? Your... <laughs> Damn it! Do, 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 do. <laughs> there we go! If you're going to share your, your, your channel, if you're, you're going to share your browser, browser always, always hide your Pokemon's bar. <laughs> That's so incredible. Uh, somebody else must have gotten on this computer. Played a prank on me, like Blue Sargus. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Although, I, I can vouch yeah, I can, I can for the fact that that would not be the first time that happened. Thank you. Thank you. So there's precedent. Yes, it is. Anyway, thanks for noticing that. I mean, as long as I'm gonna... has elephant uh, <laughs> Better than you did when you lived with us. So. <laughs> I don't actually see anything. I'm just, you know. <laughs> thanks. Making you hyper paranoid. Oh, I don't. I don't care. Everybody watches porn. It's an adult stream. I regularly, I regularly have, have to show off my browser for trainings at work, and, and so, so I have very, very carefully, carefully like put everything into folders, folders and named my folders things like hobbies and not dirty. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right. I feel like I need to turn off my bookmark bar though, but you guys, should, if you want to see your notes in my bookmark bar, uh, getting started. Okay. Oh, a folder called the RIP. Uh, Trade Skill Master Application Info, Online TV Database, someone's blog called Indistinguishable from Magic, Tweak Guides, and you know, to my Gmail. <laughs> you know a folder called RIP? Are you planning on running some Palladium games sometime soon? Uh, no, I think this folder was created in like, I don't know, like 2007 or something, and it's from the RIP MMO. Uh, my bookmarks my folders are applets, applets. Uh, company name links for, for my, my stuff for work, learning, arts and hobbies, writing and publishing, health and personal fitness, entertainment, shopping and clothing, finances, mm -hmm. and miscellaneous. Mine are porn, porn, access, porn, how to access porn, uh, <laughs> and maps, porn. and maps to find more porn. Hey, so here's a question for you guys. Do they make a lot of porn with like um, that with like narration that tells you what's going on on screen? Do they make a lot of porn with narration? Okay, so I have. Are you talking about audio described porn? Yeah. Do they make a lot of that? They don't make a lot of it, but it does exist. I'm going to throw out there there's an entire subreddit. Dedicated to audio <laughs> performance porn. Well, um, there is that. There is not just a subreddit, but there are entire websites for people who want to have those, you know, like fanfic style porn stories read to them in audio format. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. well, 
that and then just flat out like role play scenarios like uh, asmr but even more creepy somehow oh yeah <laughs> Um, I would talk more about it, but I think other people are uh, broadcasting on less wholesome, I mean, more wholesome platforms. Moving on to the it's game. Like never actually watched any streams on Twitch. Dude, I mean, <laughs> compared to some of what you get on PornTube, I mean, YouTube. <laughs> yeah, you probably have a point there. <laughs> so. Here I have Friday Knigets, which is actually the word Knights. Word. Knights? Random Encounters? And then here I have Wendell, my halfling gnome. I mean, my halfling monk. My halfling gnome elf. Monk. Level 7. Lightfoot halfling. Gnome elf? Half elf, half gnome. How come we can't have halflings, half halfling, half gnomes? Why isn't that a thing? You call them Holmes. What's up, Holmes? I, I like the idea of half halfling. Half halfling, half like quarter. Quarter half halfling. If you're half halfling, that implies that your other half is human, and you'd be a three quarterling. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> half halfling, half dwarf. Seventy fifth percentile halfling. That's half. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Really, I'm just a half with a beard. <laughs> so here we go. Yeah. This is my character sheet. I've been scanning up and down it. Pretty nice, oh, eh? Pretty, pretty nice. nice. So you guys, you guys last week you were all, oh, we'll, we'll get, get our, our characters, characters put in a roll 20, 20, and I see that neither of you did. I did. It's just it was in a dream that you can neither verify nor deny. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I, I, I didn't, I didn't um, because I spent eight hours at home yesterday, uh, and during all eight of those hours... Oh boy, was, here's the list of what we did. And today, uh -huh. I, I was also asleep. Uh -huh. Then when I woke up, I got lazy and, and watched some streaming on Twitch, and now I'm here talking to you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to stop the time! <laughs> Well, also, I woke up today and drank 16 ounces of water. Then I had a monster drink. And then... I wish I had a monster drink right now. So, dead tired. a couple months ago, I was like, I don't think I'm drinking enough water. So I bought this big jug. Okay. It, like, makes fun of me. I had one of those. As I drink water throughout the day. Okay. As you can see, this is sitting about three quarts. This is the third gallon of water. I have had for today. I'm beginning to think there is something seriously wrong with me. Yeah, seriously, man. Sounds like you have diabetes. The diabetes? So, uh, a coworker, there's a, there's a specific type of diabetes specifically related to water uh, and your ability to absorb it because you're always thirsty. And a coworker was freaking out because I drink, you know, three, four gallons of water a day. And uh, so I went and got tested for it, and I'm good. I'm super healthy. Nice. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm super healthy too, yet I pee once every hour or two during the day. I, I do I pee, pee like every 45, 45 minutes. minutes. That's, that's, that's pretty clockwork for me. Yeah, I don't understand why. Well, for me. I, I, I'm drinking three gallons of water a day. <laughs> yeah, so. I am not. I am probably eating three gallons of salt a day, though. Maybe that's a problem. That might be a problem. And that, that could be a serious issue. <laughs> and, uh, For the entire month of September, I've only ate chicken, turkey, and eggs. Uh, in addition to like broccoli and peas and steamed vegetables that come in frozen bags. Uh, and so this month, I was like, oh, I'm going to add some beef and pork to my diet just to branch out a little bit. But my body is like, no, pork is horrible. Never eat it again. Oh. Oh. I, see, that's sad. Does that include bacon? And pig belly? I had ham and, and ham steak. Is what I had. Oh, yeah. Pretty, pretty upset stomach issues. Oh, dang. Uh, I have been using bacon grease to cook my eggs, and that has not caused me to get sick. Mmm. ham steak. And I mean, yes, my ham steak was fully cooked. I have a digital thermometer. I made sure I wasn't giving myself like worms or something. But uh, it just did not sit well with me. So I think I'm... 
I'm, I'm done, done eating pork. pork. I'm gonna have, have to go kosher. kosher. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay though. though. My, my like personal, personal goal in life is to consume chickens into extinction. Not me. I just did some rings. Leave the rest behind. I'll eat as many tiny birds as possible. Which brings us to. I got a COVID test yesterday. <laughs> when do you expect your results? Got them already. I am negatory, which is positive that I'm negative. I mean, I am positive that I'm negative, which is positive, well, not negative. Out there is being safe with COVID because, like, uh, we've had a massive increase here in Montana. And I was, I was watching a thing today that was like, you know, it took five months for us to hit the first uh, 5,000, three months to hit the first 5,000 people. Yes. Now we're doing that a week. Yes. It's, yeah, it's not great across the interior right now, where it's been usually pretty good up until this point from what I understand. California's doing great, though. You should come here. Uh, Wait, don't come here. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, we've gotten. I mean, we've gotten increases, but it's not horrible yet. In fact, every other state is considered San Francisco just moved to yellow tier for, uh, like lockdown situation, which we've been worse than that up until just like a week ago. I know, right? I've been going out to doctor's appointments and getting probed <laughs> at the doctor. <laughs> Comma and getting probed. And I so I stepped outside and picked it up off my stoop. And my neighbors who are moving out happened to be there, like, in their last set of boxes. And they were like, Oh, we have this seat. Did you see how high the snow was piled up on your car? And I was like, No, because I haven't had to leave my house in 10 months. So I didn't when it snowed 30 inches of snow here in Colorado. So, yeah. You know, you really do need to get out and, like, start your car once in a while. At least defrost, like bring a cigarette lighter to kind of melt the doors down a little bit. Not, not when it's 30, 30 inches, inches of snow outside. outside. Okay, maybe uh, one of those butane torches. On occasion, I will drive out to the country and listen to an audio book, but not when there's 30 inches of snow. <laughs> I can't blame you. You can probably end almost any story with, but not when it's 30 inches of snow outside. And you wouldn't get any story with... No shit, there I was. This transition now, no shit, there you were. Deep in the bowels of a stinky, nasty, evil, putrid cave. You did sit here by the adventures of world to recover a woman named Alice who had gone missing. She is the mayor's daughter and a highly important and influential person. However, after fighting your way through beasts, monsters, and beast monster man, you found Alice lay crumpled upon herself in the cave's deepest bowels. Instead of rescuing her like the gentleman you were paid to be, you decided to beat the crap out of her. Awakening Wait inside of her. Minutes. That oh, this is exactly what happened. Without mm. provocation, Wendell started punching her in the face. Awakening inside of her, a terrifying curse as she burst into a wolf and began to run away from your murderous intentions. I see. That, that's not entirely how I remember things going down. You know, I don't seem to recall it going that way myself. But that hey, is objectively it's his... what happened. It's his game. It's, you know, whatever he wants to say. I feel as though I need to go back and watch the VOD. Yeah. You if, probably if I should. downloaded it, I would pull it up right now. And you probably should go back and watch the VOD because you guys are jerks who did who found a woman handcuffed on the floor and was like, oh, her handcuffs aren't quite tight enough. I'm going to beat the crap out of her. 
Okay. That is exactly think, what happened. I don't okay. feel as though my character would have done that unless she hit me first. Yeah, you know what else? I distinctly recall some dungeon master, I don't remember which one, saying something like, yeah, you knew she was a trap. I know. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh-huh. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, we find ourselves... With she's still fleeing, alive, though, right? She, she is. She fled into the other room. Yes, we find ourselves with a fleeing wolf woman running away from two murderous bastards who are hunting her for sport. Um, and it's her turn. So she's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's... Yeah. 35, 40, 45, 50. I should and do Halloween you, BGM. You hear from deep in the, the caves where she has run away, howling, loud, pained howling, and it is answered by more angry growls and howls and roars. Oh, no. I think we were supposed to kill all those wolves before we came through here. <laughs> But I didn't want to. They were just, they were fine. I know, they were just sleeping. Wendell, it is your turn. All right. I just started some background music too, so you guys won't be able to hear it, but I sure You might not see me when you come back. Be sure on someone else's pillow. Wait, your, your background music isn't the soundtrack to Romeo and Juliet? What Should it be? Background music? Should it be? What else is there to listen to besides the soundtrack to Empire Records? Soundtrack to The Matrix. Why do people buy albums that aren't soundtracks? I think what I want to do is first figure out why I don't have... Oh, there we go. Uh, so, so are we trying to escape? We're trying to escape, aren't we? We need to go. Yeah, you guys are pretty banged up and running low on your resources. We really are. The problem is, is Bjarg is not as quick as I am. I don't think, I don't think, like, escaping is, I don't know, like, it, it, yes, escaping is the smart option, but is escaping the option that will fulfill our contract? I'm not concerned so much about fulfilling our contract as I am about continuing my heart to beat. Ah, oh, see, well, that's where we differ. Aha. Well, then. Why don't we at least go to the mouth of the cave where we can have a bottleneck from which to have a tactically superior advantage? Right, I agree with that. That is, that is why I, I have my, my mouth frantically racing back to the <laughs> cave's entrance to, okay. to try to help cut anyone off as they try to leave. Um, excellent. Then I will do one of these jobs. He is is this difficult terrain? Away. Is the water difficult terrain? Um, that water is not. That water is fairly shallow. Okay. Then I'm going to... Um, because you're a halfling, it's like knee deep on you, but for Barag, it is like ankle deep. Okay. Oh, we jumped know. it last time because it had that scum on top. But that scum burned away, right? When the well, that, guy that, died. Is, that scum was that thing, yeah. So this is twenty-five movement. Um. Oh, there's the mold. Fudge, a Rooney. Fudge, fudge, a Rooney, Rooney. Wait, do we go? We have to go through the mold, don't we? Yeah, but if you skirt the outside edge, it should be fine. Uh, you, you have might to make be able a dex, to not disrupt yeah, it too much. You have to make a dex, athletics, or acrobatics. Thirty check. Thirty-five, forty. Um, boom, and then so question: How are we doing diagonal distance? I just counted as five feet, just like the tool does. Okay. But you, you do need to make a deck save. Okay, I will do so right now. I'm so scared. My dexterity isn't very good. It's only a plus five. 
Oh, no. I rolled a 21. 16 plus 5. You succeed. Heck yeah. Nothing Nothing happens to you. Okay. You continue. Five. Oh, come on. Select. Not my... There we go. Five. Ten. Fifteen. Twenty. Mm, scroll the screen. Mm, zoom out. Twenty-five. 30, 35, 40. And then, since it's probably dark over here, I'm going to dark over there. shadow step as a bonus action. How far does it say I can go? Uh, shadow step. I have key strikes. I have un. Was that what that sound was? Sixty feet. Holy free moly! Okay, so that is a long way. That is a total of 140 feet that I can go. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. 25 30 is i couldn't see around the corner so this is yeah, where yeah. i will teleport to yeah you do have to have line of sight to shadows down yep is this where the entrance was no that's the tripwire yeah the entrance is over on to your left i see okay so then i actually need to go further this way three, two, three, we four. disabled the tripwire trap right you did okay yes okay i am done with my turn finally Barrick, wow. it's your turn. Wow, I can't even see Barrick from my perspective. All right. Okay. Um, no, you ran way, way, way away from him. I did. Good luck. <laughs> All right. I can move there. All right. That is... Oops. Man, I have got to learn what this uh, high key is. That's my 30 feet of movement. And then I am also going to try uh, to, I guess, deck save to get here. Okay. And you said it's just a deck save? Yeah. Is that correct? Here we go. Yeah, that's going to be a 17. That's enough. All right, sweet. Ooh, well you can actually see my dice rolls now, the way I've got my screen set up. Yeah, me too. I'm so excited. Okay, so that's enough. And that is as far as I can go on uh, my turn. That's a, that's a double movement. I'm scared. There's going to be horrible things and people are going to get hurt soon. Apparently my link to my stream isn't working. Do you guys have a link to share? Um, uh, yeah, uh, MA posted it in our the chat on my channel. Just here, I got it. I got a copy. How do you want me to share it with you, man? Share it with me on uh, Facebook Messenger. Okay. Oh, that might be harder than I thought. Ah, here we go. Just didn't want that to get picked up on <laughs> on my screen. So yes, here we are. Got it. That's weird. Thank you. Okay, continue with the game. I am. You guys keep talking. I'm moving some things that you can't see. Oh, yeah, but we can see what they are. <laughs> there's like, there's like eight wolves down there, isn't there? And what, you've been there's, through. The, you've been in that room. that room. I have not been in that room. I never entered the room because I clank when I walk. I have disadvantage on stealth checks. 
Mm. Weird link. Wendell, however, has been in there. I have. It's been... It's been tough. Okay, Wendell, it's your turn. Dang it! Okay, hold on. Uh, 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 uh. It's a bit... Oh my god. Hold on. So, once upon a time, there was... Oh, mine too. ...a problem with my links. And so I changed it. And so now I'm good. Okay. Here we are. So... I don't see my friend yet. You mean Alice? Bjarg! Bjarg? Actually, I should probably stand right here. <laughs> okay, and then I ready in action. If I see... If an enemy comes within melee range, I will attack it. Okay. And I pass the turn. Barg, it's your turn. All right. As I'm continuing to move, uh, can I sense how close my mount is getting? Uh, we're arriving next turn. At the actually arriving at the end of this turn. How are you doing down there, Bjarg? All right. That's two. Two dead. Uh, Yes, dead right. wargs, yep. Or wargs. Oh, you're okay. you're really close. Um I see your aura. There's nothing going on in this room, so as I enter this room I shout for Wendell. Wendell I don't know. You hear his voice coming from this way. I am over here. <laughs> That's Wendell's great voice. That's some good voice acting for you guys. <laughs> Yeah, that's no, that's as good as it gets, man. <laughs> as good as it gets. <laughs> All right. So in that case, I will uh, move again. There we go. Now I'm standing in this entrance. Uh, so since you have your hunter's to mark face up, back the way I came. Since you have your hunter's mark up, Barry, yeah. You are also aware that Alice is directly east of you. No. Nah. Okay. Did I? I hunters marked Alice. You, you did. did. Oh. Okay. You guys were like, I'm gonna kill that lady before no. you even like. Uh, I I put my hunters mark on Alice. <clears throat> does not mean I was gonna kill her. It means that I wanted to be able to track her if we got separated. Yeah. It's the, the lesser known abilities of the hunter's mark. All right, so are you passing your turn? Uh, yes, that's it. I'm done. That's my full move, I think. Was that my full move? It was, but you could have taken a bonus action. Oh, yeah, sorry. No, I'm done. Ooh, I should have cast that. Ah. Well, you'll probably get too soon. Although I imagine wolves can move really fast. No, I'm thinking of Pass Without Trace Trace if I have any key points left, but I don't know if I do. Okay. They can. They can move very, very fast. Uh, not quite as fast as Wendell, though, when he's making his full-on getting-where-I-need-to-go mode. Yeah, I have two key points left. All right, a massive hairy wolf comes running down that northern passage towards you, Barry, and as soon as it sees you, it uh, jumps to bite at you. This little wolf is a massive hairy wolf? <laughs> yeah, is it dire, or is it just normal? No, it's, it's, it's a normal wolf, but it's big for a wolf. Got you. Okay. Ah, okay. 
So it's not it's not huge though, like the other ones that we fought. No, it's 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 a wolf, not a warg. It's not a large beast. It's it's Please. still a wolf. It's just a really big wolf. It uh it bites at you but does not manage to connect with you at all. Right on. That's because you tough. But if this were a spoopy Halloween game, he would gnash and gnaw at your armor. A second large wolf comes up from the southern uh, and he would say something horrible. Tunnel, but does not quite make it to you in time to gnash on your face. Gnash, gnash, gnash. This third wolf that you probably can see, that's a normal sized wolf. It's not giant. It's not a big wolf like the other wolves. It's much smaller. Okay. Is it my turn? No. Oh, how about now? Is it my turn now? Nope. Okay. And this guy is gonna take, uh, he's gonna dodge. He's dodging you. Whoa. These guys know how to play D and D. Well, he was exactly five foot short of his movement to get to Barry. (laughs) (laughs) Now from north, and you know it to be Alice, the largest beast monster you have ever seen comes charging from that north tunnel. She is half again the size of the werewolves you fought before. Ripped, like super muscular, massive claws, foaming at the mouth and howling like a madman slash dog. As she charges down the tunnel, she looks at you with red in her eyes and screams a howl that sends all of the other wolves into a frenzy. Oh my. Wendell, it is your turn. I don't like that. Uh, so, question. Um, I yell to Bjarg. Are you coming back this way to Bottleneck, okay. or should I come to you and engage? I think I will not make it that far. Sure, all you have to do is take the disengage action and then move back here. Oh, oh, well, in that case, here we go. Uh, and as you guys are talking, a giant lizard comes, like, marching down the Tyndall entrance. Is like, ah. Uh, yeah, it, it can't really talk. It's a lizard. <laughs> um, yeah. Are, are we trying to kill all these guys or what? Well, I think we're not going to be given much of a choice. Um, They're too... If we could... We really need to keep Alice alive somehow. That's not going to be easy. No, considering shackles didn't really keep her. Well, they weren't even... The shackles weren't fastened. Yeah, they weren't even fastened. Man, it would have been nice if those had been made of silver and we could have just pulled them and brought them with us. (laughs) Would have. (laughs) Uh, What were we thinking? Coming here without silver shackles. I mean, it's part of every good adventurer's complete breakfast. This would have turned into a completely different type of role playing if we got here and shackled Alice with silver shackles. (laughs) (laughs) That's how you end up with the plot of changes. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Uh, And there's only five wolves? There's five? five? Five large wolves that I can see. Yeah, you can certainly see one, two, two big wolves, and two, three normal-sized wolves, and okay. Alice, uh, who is a large werewolf. Okay. Uh, not a large creature, just, you know, right. a big werewolf. I'm not for the two of us battered and bruised taking on six 
very amped up wolves at the moment. I think you mean the three of us. The, the three of us? Because yeah, the, the lizard's here now. He arrived at the end of last round. Right so, yeah, you. the two of us is going to be a... Tr it's going to be hard. Yeah, especially <laughs> since your lizard can't actually hurt Alice. <laughs> <laughs> no. Are you sure he is celestial? Uh, I don't think his attacks count as magical damage. And Probably not. <laughs> they sure as, sure as heck don't count as silver. <laughs> He's a silver but celestial. If obviously. He can, if he can... Uh... He can kill wolves, regular wolves. Uh, that takes some of the pressure off. Yeah. The nice thing is, if they kill him, he just goes away, and That's all I have true. to do is summon him next to him. Like, he can tomorrow. he can meet shield for you. Yeah. Okay. It's it's nice having something that can just meet shield. So why don't why don't we escape for now, and try to come back. For or reinforcements. I will minor illusion a trap. Like a... Oh, no. You know what I'll do? I'll throw a globe of darkness out with my shadow powers. Is that going to... Oh, I guess it'll cancel out the effects of the daylight orb and uh, it'll be beyond into normal darkness. No, it'll be beyond the... Day... Oh, do they have dark vision? They probably do. I imagine they do. Okay. I don't know about werewolves, but I, or about regular wolves. Although I would imagine they have at least low light. Is there a difference in fifth edition between low light vision and dark vision? No. 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 See, there used to be. Yeah, fifth edition is really dumbed down. Dang it. Yeah, that's probably why it's so successful. Um, if you want right, to know, we'll... if you want to know, you can roll a knowledge check. Oh, like a, a nature or? It would be like Arcana. Arcana. See, I have um, I have no idea what you're planning in your head, so there's no reason why I would, uh, well, unless you actually ask me. If you really asked out loud, can we we'll see in the dark? Can these things have... see in the dark? Oh well, let me let me check my brains. I uh, would allow a knowledge religion role also, since this is a uh, divine curse. Oh, uh, yeah, that'll be helpful. Uh, uh, they're say, both the same for is, me. Yeah, your DC is going to be 15 to find out if these things can see in the Oh, I, I only rolled a 9. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a 6. <laughs> you have no idea. Okay. I'm going to assume that they can since they were in the dark earlier without they, his globe. I Yeah, th there was totally darkness in this cave, but also, if you remember, the werewolf brothers, Hans and Franz, and the sleeping pack had lanterns. That's true. That is true. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to give it a shot, but I'm going to need you to move back here. Um, you, you already told me that you think we should, we should leave. Yeah. So I will come back that way, but I'm going to be moving fairly slowly. I'll... I'll cover right, your. I have to take a. I have to take an action to disengage. Yeah, I'm gonna slow them down. Is is the thing. <clears throat> Hopefully. After you get ahead of me, and then I'll catch up to you. All right. So it's not my turn yet. It's no. Um. So I will, ready an action, to, cast the darkness spell with two key points, my last two after he after Bjarg finishes his turn okay Barag it's your turn alright so here we go uh, I, I have to take an action to disengage that's just moving back like a, a step right oh no, I forgot to does. take my bonus action to shadow step sorry oh but I can't because he's yeah, you light. cannot bonus. You can't shadow step in at all right now. Yeah. Okay. Every Sorry. Time. Go ahead. All right. Well, with that done, we're we're. Oh, those are dead guys up there. Oh, look at giant lizard standing there. <laughs> uh, people can't see him. There we go. Get him into the map a little bit. There. There we are. 
All right, sorry. I, I got I got a little distracted by the awesomeness of giant lizard. Okay, so then 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Whoop. That'll put me just past you right here with giant lizard. Okay. Um, and then cover that drift door for a second. And then I'll turn off the lights. Of course, are we close enough that we've got the light coming in? For, oh, was it still dark outside? It is still dark outside. Oh, okay, never mind. So there's not probably not a whole lot of light coming in. I guess it, maybe it's like this Halloween and there's like full moon. And... Not an infernal solstice, though. That's That's what I keep reminding people. Not infernal solstice. That's... The infer to, to tap the infernal solstice. The infernal solstice is the point at which the the material world is a, at its closest point to the infernal world, and the infernal solstice only happens on Halloween when there is a full moon in the same month as Friday the Thirteenth. So. So. So that didn't happen this year in 2020. We do have a blue moon this year on Halloween. Yes. Yeah. Barrick covers the the daylight sphere. So you and I finished. Are you ending your turn, Barrick? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Wendell so, casts darkness. Wendell, where is your 15 foot sphere going? It is going to be. Let me check the range. It is 60 feet. Thank you. Delson, you don't want to forget that Infernal Solstice thing. It's going to pop up again on Saturday. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, wait. No, it's got to be right here. Let's see. One, two, three, four. No, it's good right here, right? Maybe right, right there, and that's centered on that square. Mm, no, I guess I'd rather have it up here because it's a twenty-foot sphere, right? It's a fifteen-foot sphere. Oh, it is. Okay, fifteen-foot radius. Sorry. Yeah. So it's a thirty-foot diameter. So let's center it right here. All right. So right here. Yeah. Right there. Boop. Are you drawing darkness? I am. Nah. It is a thing called love. <laughs> oh, now I have wow. to reduce my key points. Okay, there's our thirty-foot spherish thing. So when he does this, <coughs> he he does the green mile kind of thing, and he like kind of does this mystic waving of his arms, and then he goes. <gasps> And he vomits up all of this darkness and it spews across the cavern and takes shape into a thick, oily mass. How are we friends? <laughs> <laughs> I was touched because by an angel, baby! You do everything in the dark when I can't see it. Pretty much. That explains a lot. So hopefully that will slow them down a little bit, at least enough to make good our escape. The darkness is so dark that it even blocks out your dark vision. Yes. Okay. So... Um, werewolf's turn. Three. There's there's nothing there blocking them from moving out of the darkness. <laughs> That's okay. What's important is that I'm here to meet Shield a little bit. Oh. Do 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 do. Right. Claw. Armor class 23 with the bite, armor class 19 with the claw. Both hit. 
Okay. This this wolf comes charging up at you, like rakes with one claw, doing ten points of damage as it cuts into your chest, and then it tries to nip at you, oh, and it manages no. to get a hold of you, but only does three additional points of piercing damage. So ten slashing, three piercing. Oof. It's All a good right. thing we have twin brothers because we might <laughs> we might need them to come find our bodies. <laughs> I need you to roll. I need you to roll a Constitution save. Really? Nope. I get to do oh, that. No. Uh, okay. Do, 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 do. Con is not my best. <sighs> okay. At least it wasn't a natural one. But it was a natural two. Noted. There is no constitution bonus on Earth high enough to make that a success. No, and it's only a DC 10. Hey, hey, I did my best, all right? Do I have advantage? Can I get advantage? <laughs> for for all my flavor uh, flav you're inside uh <laughs> barracks aura do you have and you have aid do you have advantage no i don't i just have no, but you should have plus four right oh Something my god like that. that brings me up to seven does that end out with my uh, let me see what does aid give you because you still have eight on you does oh, that would just five extra hit points. That's just five hit points, right? And the halfling curse doesn't, or the halfling lucky thing doesn't happen because it's only on nat ones. Only on nat ones. So ah, I'm so screwed. Thing, I had a <laughs> what, what is that? Um, is that part of my channel? No, that wasn't part of channel divinity, which I haven't used. Crazy. Let me make sure I don't have any strange defenses. Oh yeah, aura protection is just plus four to saving throws. Yeah, he gets your charisma modifier to his saving throws. I am afraid that this spells a serious problem. I have advantage against being frightened. That's it. That might come in handy. That is it. I'm looking just desperately looking I can cook for it I have a drum um, you hear a loud howl followed by some clattering noise okay uh, it's a clatter, clatter, clatter. some whimpering and some snapping oh. I, I keep hearing all these things but I can't see nothing what's going on awesome suddenly I'm a pirate I love it <laughs> This is so messed up, you guys. Don't turn the Shadow Monk into an evil dark thing. He's an instrument for good, obviously. <laughs> yeah, the evil, the, the Shadow Monk full of darkness. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like all these numbers. You're rolling so many numbers. Maybe it's fine. It, it's fine. Because they're all fighting each other. I should have set it up better so people could see the chat from Roll20 on my screen. Yeah, I should check my chat just to make sure. Because I I don't have speech chat set up, apparently. Oh, no. You hear more whimpering and whining? <laughs> That's good. Hey, at least I haven't died. If you die, <laughs> no big deal. As I haven't as... died, and that's all that matters. <laughs> I love your selfless, lawful good characters, man. They're Am so... I lawful good? I, I couldn't even find my own alignment. On this Exploding <laughs> from out of the sphere of darkness, uh -huh. massive Alice Wolf Woo! comes crashing down on you, Wendell. Okay. This is bad. Oh my god. I don't think we're gonna live through this. Well, that's what we get for coming here this close to Halloween. <laughs> <I know. laughs> 25, 19, natural 20. Oh no! That's gonna kill me. She kills you. I'm almost oh my sure. 
goodness. So wait, no, go ahead, roll damage, just to make okay. sure. All of those hit. Yeah, she has advantage on you right now because of pack tactics. Hmm. And uh, also because of that, she deals extra damage. <laughs> Oh my God. So her claws come in dealing three points of damage each. Six. And then she bites down on you dealing 21 points of damage. That takes me out. Boom. Hey, Zero. you still got those death saves to bring you back from yeah. the edge. Oh yeah. And she looks up at you, Barrig. You can't see her because it is pitch black. Don't but barely in the glistening light of what little bit you your eyes have adjusted, you can see a ferocious grin as blood drips down her jaws. Did, I'm assuming Wendell cried out. Oh yeah. He got practically slaughtered. That's up to Wendell. <laughs> oh, I totally did. But it sounded very airy. Because you know I'm partially made of smoke. And oh, okay. and darkness. Still, and like if Wendell cried out, I would uncover the globe. Oh my god. More dice? And I would shout, Wendell! Like like my uh, life partner had just said. And I would say, I, by a werewolf. Ah! Uh, okay. I did it! I, I did it for. Say, I did it for Johnny! Uncovering. <laughs> Uncovering the globe is your reaction. Okay. Oh, criminy! <laughs> They're right on top of me. And Wendell's darkness vanishes. Um, because oh yeah, would his darkness have vanished when he died? It does, because it's concentration. It's concentration, and I cannot concentrate while I am dead. Or dying. That's okay, I'll be there with you pretty quickly. It is your turn, Barry. Actually, Wendell, uh, you need to make a death save. I do make a death save. All right. <sighs> Cross your fingers, everybody. I have three chances. Well, I have up to six, but anyway, okay. Death save, how do I do this? I'm gonna roll. Can I do it here? I'm just checking my, uh... okay, death saves. Because you can do this on your character sheet, right? On the D&D uh, yeah. Beyond? Yeah, you should be able to. Uh, you definitely yeah. could if you had put your character into roll 20. Hey, you know what? You and I are going to have words. <laughs> We're going to have well, ourselves a little bit. I thought it would plan. be in the save uh, box, but it's not. Unless it's, it's a, just a constitution save. Uh... No, it's not even a con save. You don't get any bonuses. It's just a d20. So Man, I'll just do I that. I do not see death saves on here at all. I will roll just a d20. Just easy as you please. Oh, well, you can just roll a d20 on there. 13. Uh, so that's a success. Yes. Hey, I was going to say, do you get to add four? Because you're next to me, you got plus four on all saves. It is. I do get to add four. That's actually I his mean, call, but according to the terminology, yeah. Yeah, it says all saves, and it's a saving throw, so I would count it. Sweet. All right, success. I did it. Okay, now it's now it's John. Uh, it's um. Yeah, you you made it anyway. The DC is ten. Yeah, I know. So you have one success. If I get two more, I get to is, live. Unless now it is Barrick's turn. All right, uh, Barrick will have to do something cool. He's got to pull something out, right? Um, so, uh, hold on. Where is where is there? It is features and traits. Let me take a look. Where's where am I on the map? So if I move, whoops, where are you? Where is he? I can't tell what square he's in. Or is he uh, in four he's, squares? He's a large creature, so he's in four squares, and you're standing oh, in one of them. I'm actually standing in one of his squares. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe he should back up. 
<laughs> now he's backed up. So if I move here, that's not going to do it. Like, there's nobody's going to opportunity. No, you're still inside their threat range, so. <laughs> You've got to take all another right. disengage. So, um, you could either disengage or just soak all of the basic opportunity attacks. You're, you're only being threatened by one wolf right now. Yeah, well. Um, and it's only it can only strike at you once. I'm less concerned about the wolf than I am about restoring 30 hit points to Windle. Well, just stepping over like that, you're still in its threat range, so you don't provoke an attack of opportunity. All right, then I'm going to restore 30 hit points to Windle. <gasps> With my action to lay on hands. Windle, I grope you furiously. I get back up. Barring steps sideways, reaches. You could have done that from where you were at. Oh, could I? Yeah, he's in melee range. Okay, well, then I'll just move back. It doesn't matter. Yeah, all. Apparently, all D&D people have five foot long arms. All right, then I'll just move back where I was. <laughs> blue there we go. And so with my blue actions, and silver power flows down your arm, wraps itself around Wendell, sucks some of the darkness back into him, and brings him back to being. And I go, Johnny Gadget Fate. What? I didn't do it so, for anybody. That's your your standard action axiom. Yeah. Um, and then as I've got some stuff that can be done as bonus actions, and uh, I don't really need to because I've got Hunter's Mark on. What's her name? You do. Boy, if Roll20 made it easier to know how to actually change the level of my character, I would update this sheet. Okay, so as my bonus action... Got it. <clears throat> I'm going to cast Shield of Faith. Uh, Dude, which awesome. Which will conjure a shimmering field around myself or a creature of my choice. Um, and we'll put that on Wendell also, so that'll raise his armor class uh by two but i have to keep concentration on it for up to 10 minutes okay um don't you have concentration on one other spell already i do i'm gonna i'd have to let go of my uh hunter's mark hunter's mark i think okay. yeah couldn't remember if it was hunter's mark or aid no aid does not require concentration Okay, so you release your hunter's mark. I want to make sure aid doesn't give you five temporary points per turn. I'll double check. Uh, but, here, I've, uh, got the, I've got it pulled up. Your spell bolsters your allies with toughness and resolve. Choose up to three creatures within range. Each target's hit point maximum and current hit points increase by five for the duration. That's right. Okay, it's not ten pit points. You can use a you can use a higher a third level or higher spell slot to make it do additional. Gotcha. Yeah, but I don't have I don't have higher spell slots. Okay, um, just so I just cast Shield of Faith, right? You yep. did. Oh. So that puts my armor class to twenty, which would have saved me a little bit earlier. But I'm into it. Let's do this. Okay. So that was your turn. Man. This is really tough. The beast in front of you, the wolf that charged up to you, Wendell, roars and stands up on its hind legs, expanding itself into a full-blown werewolf. Jeez, wheeze. Armor class 23. Good lord, yes. Armor class 10. No. Okay. So it you manages... raised your armor class, right? I did. Don't, don't forget that. I just want to make sure. He manages to hack into you with one claw, <sighs> doing five points of slashing damage, but does not manage to catch you in his powerful jaws. Oh my. Oh my jaws. Okay. Who else? Okay. The wolf beside you 
charges at you, Beric. All right. Armor class 21. Uh, no, my, my standard armor class 23. Okay. You both get an attack of opportunity as it bounces back away from you. Oh. Oh. Yay. No sweeter words have been spoken to me this day. Oh, damn. I rolled 11. An That's 11, your weapon is going to bounce off of its wiry, furry hide. We aren't flanking it, are we? You're not. Okay. And then I'm going to spear it. I hit armor class 15. You managed to penetrate. Pen Do some damage. Penetration, come on. Let's penetrate some. 12. Pokey pokey. Spear damage. All right. You spear it as it's leaping backwards, and it when it hits the ground, it does not move anymore. Finally. Some good news. Ah. <sighs> Okay, another wolf runs up from the darkness and is also going to bite on Berig. Oh. Okay. Um, you are no, you, he does not get advantage on you. He does not manage to purchase, make purchase. Heck yeah. Right on. I'm in, I'm in, like, my character is kind of tanky, not super tanky, but kind of tanky. So I'm in the position I need to be in to fight. Also, is this a, this wolf between me and Wendell up here in the the northwest? Is he alive or dead? That one's alive. That's the one that just ran in. Okay, because um, he is within, like, he's in a place where he can also get hit by my giant lizard on it. He which is. I'm assuming goes on my turn. Yes. This okay. one down here is the one that's dead. It has a little dead marker on it. Okay. This one down here is soups hurt like it's bleeding pretty bad but it kind of just limps in like he looks like maybe a werewolf took a giant notch out of him when they tripped over each other in Wendell's darkness <laughs> awesome Alice's turn you will be mine <coughs> Oh. She growls. Yeah, I growl. Bitch, please. <laughs> As she begins to lay into Wendell. Why? Why me? Why Wendell? Because Wendell's Wendell. already infected. Oh no, poor Wendell. She gets advantage because you are within five feet of wolves. Um, 28, 16, 17. And that is a crit on the bite. Ouch. Only the crit hits. 22 oh, points of piercing damage. No. She takes another chunk of, out of you. Oh my god. Submit! Jeez. Never! And Wendell, it is your turn. Okay. Uh, I'm... Still hurting pretty bad. Um, hmm. I suppose escaping into the night isn't really going to help at this point, is it? I hate this. All right. Um. So just so you know, it's very unlikely that Window will die from this encounter. <laughs> That's true. That's good. Until somebody uncurses me. How's your deck save looking, Wendell? Um. Say that again. Sorry. I, I'm wondering how your death save looks, or not your death save, your uh, dex save. My dex save is fantastic. All right, good. <laughs> yeah, it's a plus nine right now while I'm next to you. I guess 
I wish I knew monk powers more than better than I do. I have three hit points left, boys. You have eight hit points left. I do? 30 minus 22 is eight. Didn't you do five points of damage? Okay. Oh. I believe you. I, maybe I forgot to do math. I have you as having eight hit points left. So you have eight hit points left. Deal. I mean, any one of these monsters can do eight points of damage in a round. I mean, that's not a, a great place to be in. <laughs> it's yeah. it's true. It's, it's true. gonna be it's gonna be tough to keep you up from here. I don't have a lot of healing. Like you you've already sucked up my big heal. All um, right. And and I'm like half life. I do still have. Oh, I do still have a heal. I have a cure wounds. All right, I'm disengaging. Okay. My action. And then I'm taking 40 feet of movement out of here. If you can get behind my lizard. He has left. Do you have ranged dungeon. attacks? I do have a little bit of a ranged attack. Because maybe my, between me and the lizard, you can tank a little. Like, we can tank a little bit if you can ranged attack through us. Okay. I will Okay, I'm going to I'm going to just so you guys know, because I'm out of of map space. I'm just going to grab all of these tokens. Yes. And shift them down. Okay. One so that we can just, you know, have a little bit more map space back there. Okay. That works. <laughs> yes. Fair enough. Thank you. I forgot you can actually uh stand in the space of the lizard, right? Yes, he's a large creature and Wendell is a small creature who has a special ability to just move through things that are bigger than him, which is why he can move through the wolf. All right. Cool. Indeed. Uh, but I don't want to be next to the wolf. So. There you go. That'll the Between me and the lizard, nothing should be able to get to you right there for now. Okay. I have cool. no idea what kind of uh, health the lizard's got. He is, he's got uh, 10. Oh, yeah, not a lot. <laughs> that is his, his total hit points is 10. <laughs> and don't expect his body to keep you alive because he doesn't leave a body behind after he dies. Ah! Yeah, it's kind of like, it's kind of like in the Dresden Files. Once he loses his cohesion, he's just going to melt into ectoplasm and then evaporate. Yeah, really, you, you destroy his, his uh, ectoplasmic body and send his essence back to the celestial plane of dragons. Are you yeah. sure you want me to stay? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, I'm out of here. Boom. Okay, I'm just going to grab you. Get out of the way, lizard. Grab you and toss you over there. I'm in limbo. Okay. Actually, I'm going to put you back so you can see what's happening on the map. Awesome, thank you. Just but put a little icon yeah. that says I'm not <laughs> he's, there. He's gone. He ran away. The problem cool. is, how fast are these things? Like they're pretty imagine... fast. They are pretty fast. They are not as fast as Wendell. Okay, but they're faster yeah. than me. Yeah, at, at, at full speed, they can move a hundred feet in a round. Wendell can move hundred and forty. Okay, I can move sixty. Yeah. <laughs> so it speed. is your turn, Barrick. I guess the question would become, how fast can the giant lizard? Um, do, 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 hang on, I've got giant lizard. Yeah, he's definitely no racehorse. He's, he's, he's supposed to be the equivalent of a warhorse. He has a 30 foot speed. So his speed and my speed are the same. Yeah, um, let's change that. He's actually, he's, he's actually supposed to have the same stats as the warhorse. The spell does not say that. Just it so doesn't? You know. I thought it did. No, it, it says, says the that they the have the same, creature. yeah, the same stats as the base creature. If he's uh, celestial, okay, well, never mind. Then yeah, he's slow. Yeah, he, he only has to ride a, something slow. He has a thirty foot speed, but he has a thirty foot climb speed also. Ah, that would make the difference. Hey, Tover, good evening. How, how high are the ceilings? They're tall. They're they're 20, 25, 20, 20 to twenty five feet up. Do you have any ranged weapons? Yes. Get on that I, lizard. I can't ride an upside down lizard. 
<laughs> no, but you could ride a horizontal or a vertical one. Maybe. Um, make an acrobat. If you want to try it, make an athletics check as your ride check. <laughs> uh, no, I want to. I'm going to take a. a well, disengage is an action. Crap. Um, all right, so I would like my lizard to attack that giant wolf right there, or that wolf right there. Whether it's giant or not, I don't know. Okay. Take a bite out of that guy. Take a bite out of Prime Lizard. Uh, he has a plus four on his d20 roll. So, plus slash bar, one d20 plus four. He does not bite that guy very good at all. No. No, that's okay. Maybe it'll keep him distracted. All right, so I need to cover my tracks a little bit here. Here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna frustrate a lot of bad guys, and I am going to just open up and breathe fire in a 15 foot cone right down this hallway. Yes. Okay, you should be able to hit literally all of them. Bad I'm up. even gonna let you hit the wolf beside you because. A 15 foot cone takes up more space than you have in this hallway, so I'm gonna let you like, like, like wave it. All That's right. awesome. So here we go. Hopefully, uh, they do get a save. The save is, um, uh, hold on. Dex, they get a dex save. The DC is eight plus my con mod, which is three, so. Plus proficiency bonus. What's our proficiency bonus right now? Uh, another three. So that's going to give it a 14. Is their save DC. Okay. And they'll take uh, half damage on if they save. Okay, so Alice manages to save. Otherwise, they're just taking eight points of fire damage. Because I roll for crap. Werewolves managed to save. I never really understood the concept of the death or the deck save, right? Because if I was just spraying, if I had a flamethrower and I was standing here shooting flamethrower down the hall, the only way you get your dexterity is going to keep you from getting hurt is if you move. So it, seems, it always seemed to me like if you make a deck save, you should actually have to physically move your character. I agree. Boop, boop. Um, boop. Ha -ha. There you go. They moved. I made them, I'll do a <laughs> little right. flippy flip to avoid the flamethrower. <laughs> there you go. So did anyone, I guess they all take four damage no matter what, so. Yes. That's something, especially with the one that was kind of already dead. I mean, in total, and I still did quite a bit of damage, even at four damage. Yeah, so the, piece, the wolf right? at the end of the hall. One, two, it's a fifteen foot cone. Yeah, it's fifteen foot cone. Yeah, you don't hit the wolf at the end of the hall that was almost dead. He's Wait. outside your range. Oh, this one down here with the ninja mask on. Yeah. No, he's too far away. I don't remember why he has a ninja mask. <laughs> oh, it's, I had one because I was hiding at some point. It was something you did to him, Wendell. Oh, oh, I don't know. Was he blinded? Maybe. That's why he's also kind of just one walking around all limp like. Um, okay, so you see this this wolf here. And this wolf here take the full brunt of your fiery breath. Um, and they are pretty singed and they are looking as hurt as this guy down here now. Uh, Alice takes the heat. She manages to dodge out of the way as you burn the fur. It is already starting to regrow. And these two werewolves down here like do little matrix. They, they pull a total like underworld one of them climbs down a wall. They repeat the same animation over and over again. And uh, they take a little bit of damage as well. Damn. Uh, but you notice that they shy away from you now. Ooh. 
<laughs> Topher just asked, why D&D Beyond? It is just for the character, Topher. And it's because the character sheets on D&D Beyond are great. Also, yeah. they, have a dice, they have dice rollers built in on D&D Beyond now as well. Yeah, Topher, if you go to my YouTube channel, you can see my character sheet that I, I roll on. This wolf is disengaging. And if you need a, if you need a shortcut to Delson's YouTube channel to check it out, there you go, right there, it's in the chat. Heck yeah, baby! You can get different character sheets on Roll20, and actually, you can get an extension for Roll20 that will integrate the D&D Beyond character sheets into Roll20 directly. How much does that cost? I have no idea. I don't think it costs anything. I just think you have to install it. Okay. Okay. So the wolves and werewolves all shy back into the cave. Uh, and Alice just kind of puts both claws into the walls and leans forward and is like, you can go. We'll get what we want. <gasps> what? <laughs> Man, she's not very smart. Because <laughs> if I go, I'm coming back with a few more hirelings. Yeah, no kidding. As soon as the sun comes up. Well, it's your turn, Berg. What's she gonna do? Uh, you know, I wish I knew. I wish I knew Bahamian lore better because I'm not sure whether Bahamut would appreciate discretion being the better part of valor, or if, if my devotion to Bahamut would say, no, screw that, <laughs> and keep, it, keep fighting. Like, fight until I drop. Yeah, Let's I'm pretty sure he's pretty chill. Lore. I think he's pretty chill. Bahamut. Was Bahamut. the dragon god of justice and a subservient deity to Torm, god of law. Before entering the Ferunian pantheon, he was a member of the Draconic pantheon as a deity of good dragons, metallic dragons, wisdom, and enlightened justice. Justice tempered with mercy and punishment with forgiveness. Known by the name of Zymor, for some time he was also a member of the Untheric pantheon under the alias Marduk. My. His natural form is that of a platinum dragon, said to be many to be the one of his only one of his kind. He is the eternal rival of his sister Tiamat, queen of the chromatic dragons. Bahamut is stern and very disapproving of evil, always arguing with Asgaroth about his crusade against it. He accepted no excuses for evil acts and didn't tolerate even minor offenses by evil creatures. In spite of his stance, he was also considered one of the most compassionate beings in the multiverse. He had limitless empathy for the downtrodden, the dispossessed, and the helpless. He usually preferred to polymorph those who had offended him instead of killing them, although it was also said that Bahamut loathed to sully himself with the blood of evil creatures. By draconic standards, Bahamut was neither vain nor de desirous of treasure. He valued wisdom, knowledge, prophecies, and song. He used the great wealth he had amassed over the ages to help those in need while using magic items he'd gathered to further his goals. He reading the likes... uh, worshippers part down at the bottom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he likes to prove the strength and worthiness of his followers by battling against them in his dragon form. Sure would be nice to have a dragon right about now. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Send me a dragon. Okay, so... So, okay, here, dog based on justice, nobility, protection, and honor. Send me a dragon. Taught his followers to always uphold the highest ideals of honor and justice, to be constantly vigilant against evil, and to oppose it from all fronts, and to protect the weak, liberate the oppressed, and defend just order. Advocated greater justice that included fighting against evil and toppling oppressive regimes. He also liked to reward strength of purpose and character. Uh, the Terrian Code, a draconic code of honor created by the gold dragon Terrace in the ancient past, originally intended as a code of conduct for the lords who attained the King of Justice. The Terrian Code eventually was adopted by many gold and silver dragons. The Terrian Code was similar to the codes of chivalry adopted by knightly orders of humanity, included paying homage to Bahamut as well as to the draconic deities Lindis and Tamara. 
The major precepts were justice and good above all. This is probably the most important part. Honor and fealty to the king. Honor and respect to righteous innocence. Honor and duty to the balancer and to her mercy and to the justice maker. Honor and protection to the lesser races. Honor and correction to the enemies of justice and good. Honor and forbearance for oneself. You should so, also temper that through the lens of the fact that you are a vengeance tool. Uh, you are you are the righteous justice of Muhammad. Right. And so here's what I'm thinking. Um, is that uh, so far, there is nothing to, to, to revenge here. Like, that is correct. She hasn't done anything but be turned. Except, well, that you know and, of. Yeah. Uh, and well, that we know. Wendell yeah. did punch her first. So he, he, she is, as far as you can tell, defending herself. Yeah. Keeping all this in mind, I think I, I, I think what I'm going to go with here is the best course for that would follow most closely to my beliefs would be to retreat go back and try to do some research to find out if there is any way to save her and then return with uh, armed with better knowledge and possibly a few more people carrying weapons just in case that sounds like a very uh responsible course of action for you as the justice of bahamut so i and will salute her before uh, uh before disengaging and then uh turning to go well damn that's okay. awfully they let you leave and we're gonna move you back to the waiting room <laughs> doop, 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 doop. the waiting room where all heroes go to live in the halls of valhalla forever uh and only because i don't have any other maps <laughs> okay that's fair all right the wolves allow you to leave, and uh, what do you guys do now? Do you go back to town? Do you go all the way back to Giannis? Do you? Uh... As far as I'm concerned, if, if we if we're gonna discuss it on the way back to town, uh, we have not yet fulfilled our contract, and there may yet be innocence there to save. I am amenable to a rescue team, but we must rest. Agreed. Rest, research, and prayer. I was thinking strippers and booze. Mm, I have my prayer, and it seems you have yours. <laughs> so... Why don't we go? Yeah. We worship different deities. <laughs> I don't worship a deity at all. Uh, Wendell doesn't, excuse me. Oh, yeah, you do. Strippers and booze. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, it's a, it's a living. I'm trying to update my character at the same time, but I'll stop that now that I actually have to participate. I just got carried away. I got swept up in it all. All the data entry, it's so fun. <laughs> um, man, this waiting room is inspiring. So I think, should I think the DM just let us go? Is what I think happened there. <laughs> I think we should head back to Giannis. Talk to the guy that I even asked his name and then forgot to write it down. Is Giannis the town that we were in? Giannis, no, is, the Giannis is the capital city that you guys yeah. live in. I don't want to go all the way back to the capital city because of what she might do in the village before we can get back. Pardon me. The village of... Did not have a name. Wherever okay. we came to get the contract from. Got it. Didn't Nameless have name. village. Didn't have a name. That's the name Okay, of the so the village, the village didn't, didn't have, have a name. Didn't have a name. The Navinum is... Um, real close and we can at least we can handle one night worth right yeah that's my thought would be go back rest through the night and um, I really the, the only thing that I'm worried about is that they might we might lose track of where they are well I think what we should do is see if we can hire uh, a tracker 
So like put a posting up tonight on, you know, the local bulletin board system, like CompuServe or yeah. something. Yeah, and like that. Yeah. I should remind you guys, there is no like inn in this town and all of the buildings were barred up when you were going through. I thought there was an inn. I thought that our contact here went back into the inn after we He went there. back inside a building. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Well, that's okay. We'll go back. Uh, surely there's a, I don't know, a stable or something we can sneak into. <laughs> okay, we can make a, a, I suppose we can try to make a small camp on the outskirts of town. She let us go. Surely she's not going to try to come after us now. I Do I feel funny or anything? Do I feel like I might turn into a werewolf at any moment? Not yet. Cool. I mean, no. <laughs> Just checking. We must find silver if it is to be f had in the area. And then set off in the morrow. First light. Okay. That is my recommendation. Okay, so you guys are going to make camp or on the outskirts of town? Yeah, I guess so. And then, like, in the morning, see if we can find anybody who in this town who might have something silver some kind of daggers or anything shackles would be nice silver shackles silver shackles would be wonderful hey it never hurts to ask i'm gonna roll survival to find a good spot okay i rolled an uh and 12 On survival. Okay, you oh. find a fairly decent place to camp. I wish I had remembered I had this ability. Right. Uh, I, I took a I took a feat called Warcaster. You can use your reaction to make an opportunity attack to cast a spell that has a casting time of one action and targets only that creature. Wow. That's, That's a pretty good ability. Cool. That's yeah. freaking great. All right, uh, Wendell manages to find a fairly decent place to camp down for the night and put up your, your tents and bed rolls and make a little fire. As you uh, are making camp, you hear the howls of wolves in the hills and forest growing farther away. Okay. Um, right. Okay. Do you do anything else before bed? Um, hold on. Let me... You let, let drop your, here. you let drop your hunter's mark, right? I did let drop my hunter's mark. I had my shield of faith on you, but it's been, it yeah. was only up to ten minutes, so that's gone. Okay. Um. And I've used all of my healing. Oh wait, I could I could use, of course you heal on a rest here, right? You fully heal in fifth edition on a rest. You do, yes. You yeah. get half your hit so die I back. I don't need to cast any kind of heals. Correct. Okay. Um, um, the only thing you might want to do is relearn spells or pick different spells to prepare. Well, he would do that in the morning. Yeah. And also, I'm not going to take the time to go through all of the spell list and re-pick my spells. <laughs> I, I, I think I picked the best spells from the spell list to repair the, prepare this time. So I'll probably just keep them. There might be an argument to be made to memorize find person or lo uh, locate person or object. Do I, can I learn that? You should be able to learn locate object. Known spells. It is. Uh, locate object is not on my list of, oh yeah, it is, there it is. Well, I could prepare that. Do I do that in the morning? Is that what you said? That's, fine. I've got yeah. find steed. Find person is not on my list, though. Okay. I don't think locate person is a is a spell, actually. Unless that's a... Uh, yeah. Let's see. Locate object. Would that help? Name an object that is familiar to you. Those silver sha that. Or those shackles. You think she's going to take the shackles with her? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> uh, 
Hey, so I'm assuming that you're you can't reset your spells before you have your long rest. So, um, Wendell. Yes. When you wake up in the morning, you feel as though you have not slept at all. Mm. You have one level of exhaustion, and you do not recover any hit points. Okay. How about remove curse? You got that on you? You can, you can make an addition, another saving throw if you would like. I, I actually I, I can. Oh no, wait. Can I? Maybe not. You can. You can remove disease and. Uh, I'm thinking it might just on, be disease. With your lay on hands. You can disease remove disease and poison, and, and that's it. No yeah. curses. Well, you could try. I'll roll my saving throw first. This is actually nine. Yeah, you are just you are exhausted, feverish. Your stomach is upset. Did you add your four points to your I saving did. throw. I did. You uh, you can barely sit up. I mean, you only have one level of exhaustion, but I mean, it's exhaustion. Yeah. Okay. I thought I had a spell that got rid of exhaustion, but I don't know what it would have been. I don't think conditions do I I can put exhausted on here, right? Yeah, uh, are you on your you're talking about your character sheet? I found it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't have anything that cures exhaustion. I swore I did. I don't think you do as that kind of paladin. Uh, you, you might be right, because there was a different type of paladin that I looked at becoming at first. Um, it would have made me more tanky, but I decided we needed a good uh, combination of tankiness and damage dealing. Can I take a short rest and use hit dice, or does you that can, not work? You can, can use hit dice. You will get half of the hit points back. Oof. All right. I'm going to give it a shot. Um, unless you want to use your no don't use your lay on hands uh, unless you want to use your lay on hands to cure disease and see if that works it only uses five hit points of your lay on hands to cure disease yeah yeah I can I'll definitely try it if you think you might be infected with something I feel like so much dung and midden heap refuse let me see what I may do. All right, I will attempt to lay on hands and uh, force any diseases out of your body or poisons that might be coursing through your veins. Don't okay. forget to change your max hit points. Change. Oh yeah, I need to change my max hit points back. All right. You reach down and let the silver blue energy flow through into him. Delson, your fever flares momentarily. Mm -hmm. Your body burns with a righteous heat that seems like light is trying to tear at your very nature as a being of shadow. Ah. And then the illness burns out of you and you feel relief. Ah. You, are, oh. you are no longer exhausted. Ah. Whoa. And... Um, you no longer have the plague. Ah, <sighs> no longer exhausted. No longer have the plague. That's fantastic. I still need to roll hit dice though, yep. uh, to get hit points back. So I'm gonna try two d8 at first. See if this works. You're still a werewolf. I mean, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm totally still a werewolf. I'm just at peace with it now. Hey, um, Gareth, do you want to change my tokens max hit points back down oh. to 70? I, I don't know why it says 87. I think I should have only been at, like, my regular max is only 77. Yeah, but you had 10 extra hit points from your spell. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I thought I only had five from my spell, but I don't, I may have had more than one spell running too. Oh, that's why. So Wendell is down to 45. Yes. And I should be healed. Oh, you're right. You should be healed. Which I, I, 
thought I could change, but how long was that aid spell? Eight hours? Yes. Aid? Okay. Yeah. That's good. Because if it wore off while I was at eight hit points, I would have died again. Which I did overnight. Yeah, Shit. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. <laughs> you woke up with the plague. I woke up with the plague. Okay. All right. It's okay. Everything's fine. <laughs> no problems. Okay, I'm going to roll some hit dice real quick. Eights. Also, I ruled it as raising your maximum. So you were eight hit points out of 55, and you would be eight out of 45 now. Okay. Your bless hit points melt first. So three hit dice takes me up to 12 from eight, so that's 20. Three more hit dice gives me, oh, perfect. 24. So I'm up to 44 hit points. Awesome. Okay. 44. Make that happen. Well, that's a little bit better. That's considering I'm only one hit point shy of my maximum. That's so much better. So what he had uh, just as a sidebar and not, not, not because I, just because I, as a, a player, I'm interested is what he had a disease or is it a curse? Okay, so what you cured is a disease. Okay. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, it's an infection uh, based on, in the book, it's called sewer plague, but I decided it was sturdy wolf plague. <laughs> <laughs> dirty wolf plague. Okay. okay. I just, a, a part of the reason I wondered was because like my character is at first immune to critical hits but also immune to all disease. You yes, are. which is why I never asked you to roll a savings throw. <laughs> okay, well, also, I'm pretty sure she never hit me. Yeah, but everything in that dungeon that you guys fought, except for the wargs, was infected with the disease. <laughs> Even the big moldy <laughs> creature? See, oh, yeah, actually, I, I don't think I was ever hit by anything but the big moldy creature. Yeah, uh, the big moldy creature is the source of the disease. You don't live in a cave full of big moldy creature and not get some sort of weird infection. <laughs> uh, gotcha. You also only got it if they bit you. Uh-huh. Ah. I see. But you'll remember that Delson had to roll more than one saving throw throughout the course of that adventure, so... I did. I just wondered uh, because I was like, are we getting are we getting turned into werewolves? Because what would a were uh, dragonborn look like? You are immune to lycanthropy. Have you guys ever seen Thirty Rock, where it cuts away and it's like werewolf bar mitzvah? Spooky, scary, oh, men. Yes, I you recently have, and he goes, watched that. Boys becoming men, men becoming wolves. Ooh, yeah. Tracy, Tracy Jordan's werewolf bar mitzvah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I have not, I have not watched that. Oh, that show's brilliant. You should watch it. I was pleasantly surprised. My husband has been trying to get me to watch it for years and he, he narrates it for me because it's not described anywhere. Okay. I am assuming you guys are following through on your plan. You were going to try to track her down. You're going to hire a tracker. Yes. Go back to the cave. You go back to the cave and everything is gone. Of course. Um, the only thing left is the bones that were not wolves. Like even the dead, the two dead werewolves and the wargs have been carried off. Ooh. Um Whoa. You can roll survival checks to see if you can track them. Okay. And I'll have your. your I was like, tracking. I know a, I know a barbarian might have been able to track them. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's not gonna work. <laughs> uh, I rolled one. Oh dear. I think I can actually. I level. You're pretty sure they went back into town. Very. Are you sure this is the same cave we were in last night? 
Oh, sorry. Um, I can roll on d20 now. Oh, awesome. you entered everything on roll 20? So you got oh. a six? I got a six. Okay, uh, your tracker even looks confused. There's no sign of which direction they went. There are so many tracks here crossing back and forth over each other. I have no no idea where they went. Let's actually um, just try heading away from this area in the direction we heard. I was going to say, in the direction we heard the howls coming from? Deeper, deeper into the woods. Yeah, and see what we can find. Um, yeah, so you, you can just... go for, like, travel in that general direction for, uh, I don't know, half an hour or so, and then... Yeah, I say we go at a slow pace. Out and look for uh, tracks again. Yeah, I say we go at a slow pace and rely on your passive perception, which I understand is famous for being quite excellent. I do hear that. I will allow that. And I'll say roll survival rolls again, this time with advantage. Okay. Man, my survival roll sucks. Really? Yeah. Mine's a plus three. Mine's a zero. I rolled a six and a one. Oh, dear. Uh, it's I'm... weird. Like, I don't like that everything is tied to survival now. They dumbed, it. they dumbed the game down a little too much. In my no, opinion. I think investigation and perception have a place as well. 15. Okay. 20 plus 10. That's your tracker, your professional tracker that you hired. Oh, okay, good. I was hoping it wasn't the stealth of my... My prey. I w that would have been a little. Yeah, I've already rolled their stealth roll, and uh, he's not able. You guys can't find any trace of them. Wow. Okay. Werewolves are really, really good at stealth. Okay. I'm sure they are. That's good to know. So it sounds like we need to find a bait. Plan for bait tonight. Let us go hunting and then make a trap lead the lead... Topher wrote, wrote yeah go deeper mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I imagine he totally oh, said it yeah. in a creepy voice like that too go deeper to to Topher technically is part of this game he could jump in on his barbarian and be in the waiting room also uh, that's right he only has six hit points and he has it leveled <laughs> 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 good job um hey so far we've done good at killing an entire two hours of, of gameplay just wanted to let you know yeah. so i'm going to do a little bit of uh fast timing on you guys now you okay. spend several days trying to track these wolves um the town has settled down the animals have not been destroyed as often but uh about a week later yeah a messenger arrives oh with a note for wendell oh i don't get to do my whole bait plan bait and switch you can do your bait and switch plan but it does not attract any werewolves okay what's the note say it says we will collect you in time signed alice well it's good of her to at least tell us who she is I'm curious as to why they want me. I show this to Yarg. And we should s probably tell the mayor of this town. Your, well, your daughter is lost. She has joined the enemy. Cursed with lycanthropy. Forever doomed to roam the night. As a beast. I, I, what do you mean? 
She now leads a pack of wolves, as she herself is an alpha werewolf, it appears, and hungry for my dark blood. It can't be. That can't be true. You're a liar. You're a liar and a thief and a criminal. Say what you will. The truth is in the note. And I show him the note. He, he reads it and you can see tears forming in his eyes. And he's like, I can't believe it. I won't believe it. I'll hire better adventurers and they'll save my daughter. Very well. Then we shall take our leave. But I do not recommend it. She is a fierce opponent. Powerful. He, uh, storms away from you back inside his house. And, I look uh, at, I look at Bjarg and I'm like, that could have gone better. You see, you see a, a old face peering out through you, through windows, through dirty windows across the, the dirt road. Uh, as you look, the face lets the curtain close, but you see a hand beckon forward. Should we? I can't figure out how to update my character on Roll20, so I'm not doing it. You hit okay. it. I did. It didn't. I can't even figure out how to change my level. There's a gear icon next to background. Click that. Uh huh? Oh, no. no I don't even want to load. Yeah, you have to do it inside the journal, also. You can't do it from your token. Yeah. Yeah, I'm doing that. I have my character up. You yeah, see that? Hit the gear icon. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, okay. There's a gear icon at the top. That's what I mean. Next to the word background. The, oh, I'm sorry. No, next to yeah. the word. Yeah, next to the background The field. one next to background is the one you have to use. <laughs> sorry. It is next to the word background in mine because I put monkey background as my background. <laughs> For some reason, my background actually just has my character name in there. I have no idea why. Most of my descriptions just say ASDF. Your background says Axiom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah, the person beckons you from the dirty window. Yes, tinker to you, we are we are playing fifth ed rules. Fifth ed, fifth ed. Okay. Uh, fifth ed, my least favorite ed. Comes comes well below uh, third ed, phys ed, and six ed. Topher, if you are going to level up your character, you also get uh, magic items. Uh, 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 Two uncommon and one rare. One common and one rare. Two common and one rare. Two uncommon and one rare, I thought. Yes, that. Yeah, two uncommon, one rare. Yeah. And you'd um. be level seven. 5e is off. 5e is weak sauce. Opinion. <laughs> it's um, not my. You know what? It is my, my favorite. Be my facts. <laughs> it is not my favorite role-playing system, by far. It's not mine either, but I think it has its its value as a system. It has right. value in that it got a lot of people playing role-playing games. I mean, Baldur's Gate I, 3 is 5th edition, so... I agree. It's better than 4th Ed Topher. I think if I was going to pick an edition of Dungeons & Dragons from all of them that I've played, I would still play 3-5. But it, that's probably mostly because it's the one I've played the most of, to be fair. If I was going to pick an edition of Dungeons & Dragons to play, it would be Pathfinder 2. <laughs> if I was going to pick one, it would be Spelljammer. Uh, if I was going to pick any tabletop, though, it would be Cinematic Unisystem. Cinematic... What? I... I would like to take the opportunity to make an argument in favor of 4th edition. Go for hey. it. You will be burned at the stake later. I mean, I like 4th edition. I'm not going to argue about 4th ed. I just, I only played it like a handful of times. I like and it. And every time I played it, it sucked. So I don't have any good experiences with 4th ed. So I can't defend it as a, a system. It was a it's tactics great. game. That, exactly. That's why I love 4th ed. Uh, the problem with 4th Ed was most people don't know how to role play if the rules don't tell them how to role play. Yeah. And 4th Ed's rules didn't tell you how to role play. 
they were all pretty much for the combat and it was a tactical rpg yeah like i said i i just never had a good experience with fourth ed i mean i've had plenty of really great games in uh, second edition ad and d uh, revised second edition actually the black books I had a lot of three and three five. I've had a lot of good experiences with fifth ed. Fourth ed just was like in this bad spot where I played in a lot of crappy games, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you though, I, probably, I think probably the greatest tabletop role-playing game experience I've ever had was actually Legend of the Five Rings. I hated that so bad. I, w- I was just in one of those games where, you know, when everything is right and the party works together and the role play is amazing and really? then you try to recreate it later and it sucks <laughs> interesting yeah that's i had we we uh, i would imagine delson had the same experience we had a similar experience with uh second edition we just had a party that clicked we yep. had a game that was amazing doesn't mean second edition was amazing it means we loved it because we had really good games in second edition yeah uh, L5R also is a pretty good like the mechanics of the system are good um, but people try to play it like it's epic fantasy and it's not it's low fantasy um, like you're you're intended to die from a katana slash you know so Squeak Jeez. it is just uh, Wizards it's like of the Coast that makes all the D&D stuff well makes the, the official D&D stuff now there are lots of companies making supplements for Dungeons and Dragons uh, and then making their own games, but all the official licensed D and D stuff is still Wizards of the Coast for now. Yeah. Hey, Wendell. Oh, that's... Wendell, you should come talk to me. I'm an old lady who has information and exposition. <laughs> <laughs> mm, it appears not everyone in this village. What was it called again? Didn't have an M. Yeah. Didn't have an M. Didn't have an M. Uh, hates us. So I beckon to Bjarg and say, I'm curious. No, Very leave curious. the dragon alone outside. What? Leave the dragon outside. I just shake my head and turn around and walk away. Okay, but I mean, you're a shadow monk, so you could probably understand why people who would be inclined to give you information might not want to be around a paladin of Bahamut. I mean, if she gives me an interesting signal of like, I belong to the way of shadows as well. uh, She has tattoos that are very intriguing to you. Ah, then I say... Good friend, Dragonborn. Yarg. I put my light hand upon your beefy shoulder. There are some things in the world that just shouldn't be known to people who are good. This is one of those things. I shall be right back. All right. So she lets you into her hovel. You notice there are no lamps, no candles, nothing in this hovel. The only light is the dim light coming in through her curtained, heavily curtained windows. Okay. You should know the girl chose her path. Why? Bought and paid for by Corridon, the necromancer. Does this name familiar to me? Not particularly, no. Okay. There's a lot. You, you're you're in a, you live in a super high magic uh, kingdom, okay. so there are a crap ton of wizards of great power. Okay. Okay. Where can we find this mancer of necros? <laughs> Yeah, a man of necros. <laughs> to the to the west is a city of necromancy. <laughs> the whole city is made of necromancy. It it is it is sanctioned by the wizards guild. I see. So no, no, the city is not an entire city of necromancy. It's you know just where necromancers go to study. I see. <laughs> 
And I, my understanding is that um, necromancy is not like this taboo sort of thing, or no, it's it? not inherently evil at all. Okay. Well, regardless, it could still be taboo, but yeah, right. Yeah, on. like you, you kind of you're you're generally familiar with the city of Thanopolis that she's talking about. It is like where there is this big temple to the dead, and it's like a giant graveyard, and necromancers hang out there, and goth kids are all like, "You don't understand me." <laughs> 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 you don't understand me. <laughs> okay, then. I don't, I'm like, I don't understand why I couldn't have brought in my He's friend. so Hogwarts. <laughs> I don't, I don't appreciate his kind in my home. God, Hogwarts. It, that's your call, I suppose. It burns. You should get that checked out. How, how can you stand to be in his presence? <laughs> get that checked out. I have withstood the presence of many dark creatures. A paladin of justice is almost as bad, but not quite. <laughs> you should know this was bought and sold. This town belongs to them now. And she kind of like holds out a hand and scratches out her palm. <sighs> I spit on it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, I I hand over five gold pieces. How about that? Holy crap! Yes. Yes, anything you need, I will serve you. Yes. Just I come know. and ask. I will keep my ear to the ground forever. Five gold is a crap ton of money for a common person in a small town. Keep that secret. You could be targeted for such a wealth, but... We would be at a dead end if not for oh, secrets. You. Secrets we keep well, our kind. Mm. And she just kind of rolls a hand, and the coins disappear. Very good. Uh, I don't have that much money, so I that was quite generous. Um, yeah, I go back like, out. Uh, I go back gold, out. Gold is like a month's salary around here. I mean, yeah, I know. I know it's very precious, <laughs> but to an adventurer, that's what we're made of, man. I'm surprised I'm only I'm surprised I have 37 gold pieces and I'm level 7. Yeah, you didn't get any gold. You got magic items instead for leveling. I, that's totally cool. I'm I'm down <laughs> with that. I'm not complaining at all. Um I forgot that I have a bag of holding, not that it's doing us much good. All right. Uh, well, you also, one of you picked up a, a, a particularly shiny hand axe in the dungeon. Oh, I yeah. did! I didn't put it down. Um, Too bad you don't have a wizard or something in your party to see if it's magical. You have to have a wizard? Well, or some, some sort of being that can, you know, cantrip detect magic. Can I uh, intelligence arcana it? No. Okay. All right. Uh, I'll also, hey, lady, before I go, and I like accidentally bring out the hand axe in a threatening manner, and it goes, <laughs> and I hand it to her. I'm like, what do you make of this? This is a particularly fine piece. Mm. Tell me more. It's it's an axe. Is it enchanted? Very... Um. Yes. With some sort of enhancement magic. Would you say of the plus one variety? That sounds about right. <laughs> 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 I'm a big fan of the plus one variety. Yes, it is a plus one hand axe. Okay. Excellent. I'm going to add that to my thing. All right, then I take off. I just okay. nod. I will let you know if I hear anything else. All right. I, I nod. Hand axe. Give me your magic. Give it to me. Give me your magic. Magic for free. Yeah, that was the uh, 
it, it, I mean, I, I'm actually, you know what, screw it. I'm going to give you guys the, because you went back and searched the cave to try to find the wolves. So, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and none of these, these rolls are particularly difficult to find the, the other treasure. Okay. So where is my list? There is my list. Giant Fang's Den. There is my list. In the room with the, the gravel floor underneath the gravel, you manage to find a coin purse that contains 10 gold and 15 silver. Split that. You can have eight, eight silver. I'll have the seven. Um, one of you also has a golden wedding band. I think Wendell has the wedding ring. I think so too. Uh, that's worth 25 gold. Can I liquidate that? Or You can. Okay. You you could easily liquidate any treasure in Giannis. It's a massive like metropolis city. Okay. So, anyway, where did we get the wedding ring? It was off one of the brothers, right? Yes, you pulled yes. the wedding ring off of the hand of one of the werewolf brothers, the twins. So I, I guess I don't necessarily know that you're liquidating that. To me, it seems like we should ask the mayor if he knows who the wife of that twin was. You should do that then. All right, I will. <laughs> hey, mayor. <laughs> Well, the, mayor, the mayor may not even talk to me. Um, you also, just so you know, you find a Dungeoneer's pack with no rations left in it, but 100 gold pieces near where Alice was uh, chained up. Okay, so that's 110 gold pieces hard cash. And a Dungeoneer's pack with everything but the rations. That's pretty good. Um... So I would mark 55 gold on your thing, Yarg. I'm sorry. I was just reading Togra's joke. I, what What am I doing? Marking 55 gold? Add 55 yeah, while well, you're writing gold. down 55 gold, I'll read Topher's joke out loud for Delson's audience. Yep. Okay. Priest, a rabbit and a minister walk into a bar. The bartender asks the rabbit, what will you have? The rabbit shakes his head and answers, I have no idea. The only reason that I'm here is because of autocorrect. <laughs> I, that just cracked me up. I, it, I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> That's epic. Good job. So. Okay. Um, if anybody watching my stream is actually looking at the upper left-hand corner of the magnified view, you will have noticed by now that I am absolutely insane. Because I can't stop ever moving my mouse. <laughs> so. I apologize for that. It's just a nervous habit. You better do it. That's, that's my world, baby. You got to deal with it. Okay. <laughs> what is your guys' plan long-term so I can get something ready for the next time we play this game in another year? Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I think we've pretty much lost track of her. Oh, you've definitely lost track of her. You're, there's no finding her. She was a 28 on a sneaky sneak. So um, even wow. your plus 10 tracker couldn't track her. So of course, I have no, really crappy. I have no idea, but I don't know what Wendell talked about with Crazy Lady. Oh, well, I do tell you that. I'm, I don't quite, I was like, I don't quite understand why she didn't want you in there, but this she's a she shadow. Said. She's a shadow shade, and he's a freaking paladin with a holy aura. It literally hurts her to be within 15 feet of him. Yeah, so I tell him, I don't really understand why she didn't want you in there, but this is what uh, she told me. So that was a character choice not to understand why. Or to, yeah. uh, no, you, I, do you try to ask the mayor who the Hans and Franz's wife was? Oh, yes. Uh, not, by the way, it wasn't a character choice. It was just that I don't think Wendell understood that she was a shade. Ah, okay. He's not that bright. Um, her name was Matilda, and she died many years gone. Oh, that's convenient. Well, that is unfortunate. Eaten by wolves. Oh, God! That is doubly unfortunate. <laughs> it seems you have quite the wolf problem. Her husband, and his, her husband and his brother have not been seen since. 
<laughs> uh, so the mayor's actually going to talk to me after kicking us out because we didn't save his daughter. He kicked Wendell out because he's the bearer of bad news. Oh, okay. You didn't <laughs> talk to him. You were like, whatever. Uh, Wendell was like, I have the I have bad news for you. Your daughter's a loop guru. <laughs> <laughs> She sent me a note about how she's going to steal my soul. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So I do. I don't have the ring, right? Wendell, you didn't give me the ring, did you? Nope. It's mine. Okay. Well, I have a whole bunch of gold. Okay. For some reason. I don't know why I have all this gold. You uh, found Wendell it. gave it to me. Yeah, no, yeah. I didn't find nothing. Wendell oh. gave it to me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, that, that gold has nothing to do with the ring. So here's what I'm going to do. I, I'm sitting on uh, approximately 70 gold. I'm going to assume. Let's let's do this. I'm going to give him. I'm going to, I'm going to give him 20 gold. I'm going to give that to the mayor. And tell him to use it to hire, uh, to 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 send pigeons to uh, rangers guilds to come and thin the wolf population in the area. Okay. He takes the money, but he ain't gonna do that. Well, if he doesn't, I'll come back and I'll have a reason to, <laughs> I'll have a reason to vengeance him. To just serve justice to him. Right. <laughs> I'll, I'll also make him swear that he will do so. Okay, I swear, I swear I will do so. Now he'll do it, because, you know, why not? It's your <laughs> money. He was going to pay you 100 gold to get his daughter back that he sold to it. I mean, what? Uh, <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> hey, I don't know that, and there are people who are innocents in this village. There are. There are innocent people in this village. And if we get think. 20 gold, well, I, as far as I am aware, there are innocent people in this village and 20 gold is a small price to pay to allow them to hire rangers to come in here and you know the wolf population. But you know what's sad is the rangers are gonna come in here and decimate the wolf population. And it's totally not the normal wolves fault that werewolves took up housing in this area. <laughs> <laughs> Do, I am not a ranger and as such, I know very little about the nature of such things. That's true. But the I'm rangers just... will. Yes, that is true. I know enough to, to go, hey, <laughs> people are getting eaten by wolves. <laughs> the natural enemy of wolves is rangers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> At this point, you guys have basically three choices. You can go back to Giannis and report that you failed in your mission to the Adventurers Guild. You can go to Thinopolis and see if you can find Alice there. Or you could do something else entirely because this is Dungeons and Dragons and you can make up whatever you want. <laughs> what are your ideas? My thought is um, we, we go on and uh, can pretend like we're continuing on our mission. Um, to the and we we send word back that uh, that the mission was not as um, simple as we were led to believe, and that we must continue our investigation until we see it to its fulfillment. Yep. And then head towards the Necrotown? Yep. Okay. Okay, that's what we're going to call the game, guys. Yay! Um, because we don't play that often, I'm going to use the milestone system and declare that a milestone <gasps> and say, you're now level eight. Yay! So, did you, did you hear that, Topher? If you want to level your character up, he's level eight now. <laughs> Awesome. Great game. I actually I thought that was a really good game. I'm shocked we didn't TBK. I am too. I you were merciful. I was not merciful. The module is merciful. I don't know. You were merciful by letting us go. The module tells me to let you go. 
Really? Oh, yeah. wow. Wow. If you manage to injure a certain number of the wolves, the werewolf tribe will let you go, but they become a recurring bad guy. Awesome. That's really cool. So, so uh, Ax- er, uh, Barrick's fire breath actually put you in a place where she would let you go. Save the day. Yep. Wow, my monk ended up being useless. There I don't know. End. You killed a lot of stuff. You guys just got overwhelmed because you ignored a wolf den and let them well, gang up on you. We didn't but know that the wolves now, were nasty booglies. Yeah, to give ourselves the benefit of the doubt here, <clears throat> we thought we were doing the right thing by just letting the wolves lie. Let sleeping wolves, wolves. lie. That is the rule. You have to do that. If you don't do that, you just don't have your soul. Yeah, I, I understand. I'm just saying that's what happened to you guys. Like, <laughs> yeah. if you had woken up the wolves and they'd attacked you then, you would have killed them off pretty easily. And because it was two like werewolves and three normal wolves. You could have healed up and then engaged with the giant plant monster and Alice and probably been fine. But um, no, that was, I mean, there were contingencies for if you were... For sure. We can't all make great decisions all the time. Especially when we don't have all the information. Yeah. So the and In fact, I'm the only encounter it. in this that was scripted that you absolutely definitely got attacked was the wargs. The wargs attack on sight. Um, and if you manage to kill one, they will run and get the werewolf brothers. Aha. Uh-huh. Um, but the werewolf brothers were scripted to surrender. And had you not tortured them, they would have given you all kinds of information. <sighs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying anybody who wants to know this is thrown to the wolves and vines is the name of the module. Okay. Um, this was a pre-written module. I thought it was a pretty well written one. I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed running it. There's a, actually a second piece to this module. It's a level one adventure that uses the same map and it's about fighting living plants. That is pretty cool. So it's really? a nice little nice little module that I picked up for like six bucks. So there's a new one out called. Uh. Strahd must die in space. Really? And it what? is it is Strahd finds a spell jammer ship and rigs it to his castle and kidnaps some peeps and takes off across the stars. That's insane. So I've told you guys before that spell jammer is my absolute favorite setting for Dungeons. You should Dragons, freaking right? run that one next time. Uh, you guys have to go to a necropo- ne- uh, necromancer city next time. Well, okay. The time after that. How often do you guys want to play this? I'm I'm totally down. This is great. I think that's mostly up to Axiom since we hijack his stream for it. We do. We do. <laughs> Although I am still interested in just streaming it on my channel if nobody else wants to. But it hijacks his time slot is the issue. Yeah. 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 Um, so I don't know. We'll have, let's talk about that off stream. Okay. We'll figure something out because I, Ending I stream am now. very into these characters and Just I think kidding. that this is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. So. What I want to know is if you guys want to continue playing it, do I need to flesh out an entire campaign here? <laughs> That's what I need um, to know. I would say uh, at this point, I would say yes. Uh, at least flesh out the rest of a, a, a decent length adventure. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be a whole campaign arc, but that would be cool if you Cause, wanted to. Yeah, because as, as, so far, I have literally been making everything up one chunk at a time from the beginning going, I was like, I have a city and here's this adventure and now here's this other adventure and I have no world building beyond that. So um, if, we're gonna, if we're going to do it, we're going to do it. Well, and then I guess we should also talk off off stream about like if we're gonna do regular role playing again, do we want to do this or something else? So, food for thought. If the audience has any opinion, keep it to your fucking self. No, I'm oh, just kidding. Wow. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Totally kidding, you guys. You know I love you more than my luggage. So uh, yeah, I mean I'm 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 down. I'm down to run stuff. I, I kind of missed flexing my roleplay chops and my story martial chops, and honestly, I missed flexing my character acting chops. <laughs> it's pretty good. You're doing great. 
Uh, I'm really although, impressed. Obviously, I still can't do a growly voice without coughing, so I'm never going to play Batman. That's a tough one, dude. I I, I know did what you mean. I did Kane in a Batman voice, and that one <clears throat> yes. that one that one was rough. I'm just going to have to do it like this. Well, you, now you sound like Alec Baldwin. <laughs> it's, there's never a bad time to sound like Alec Baldwin. Don't mess with me, Lemon. Get back to work. <laughs> Don't mess with me, Lemon. That's pretty good. <laughs> and of course, hey, I guys. have my. I also have my radio voice, which I use to say, "Welcome to National Public Radio. I am your host, Smooth Jazz McMuffins." <laughs> Up next on All Things McMuffins? Considered, we will consider Jazz werewolves, McMuffins. bad guys, or unfortunate victims. Hello there, this is Tits McGee. Just wanted to let you know that that was not a real NPR speaker. And Someone now says you we will hear six hours of smooth hat. jazz. Oh, Squeak that, says you need a fighting hat, words. Nelson. Them's fighting words there, Squig. Wait, what did he say? Delson need needs better a hat. better hat. Yeah, this one doesn't doesn't really go with this outfit, does it? Has everybody on 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 in chat seen Delson's dancing hat that I made for him? No, I haven't revealed it yet. <sighs> yet, dancing hat. <laughs> It's so good. Hey, I actually want to remake it and make it with uh, frame by frame animation. <laughs> oh, that would be awesome! Oh, there he goes. Go away. So we have but, thirty yeah, minutes. I'm 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 completely down to run whatever you guys want me to run. Uh, I love tabletop role playing games. I'm most familiar with Dungeons and Dragons. I'm most familiar with Third Eye Dungeons and Dragons. Um, but. I could don't. I would be very willing to run you guys through cinematic Unisystem. So uh, Unisystem Delson is what we were playing Witchcraft in, and cinematic. Instead of rolling a bunch of different dice, you roll one d twenty and add to it. I gotcha. It's and that's that's the system that the Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel the series games are written in. Man, also this the time Firefly of year always game gets like, me so stoked about Buffy, and I never I never sit down to watch it. You should. I love Buffy. I do too. It's so campy. It's a little slow I, sometimes. I also would be willing to just throw together a random uh, collateral damage game again too. <laughs> that was super fun. I don't know about you, Axiom, but that was really fun. I did have a good time with that. Yeah, I had a lot of fun playing collateral damage. Because that's one of those games where you just play and you don't have to have anything prepared. You just go and... I mean... No one could plan a better scenario than what we came up with. Dark Mittens was a hit. Yeah, we will definitely have to play Collateral Damage next Halloween for Dark Mittens 3. I hear that Dark Mittens actually was a, uh, a box office failure in the States, but the worldwide, it made a lot of money. <laughs> you, you know, and it's becoming a bit of a cult classic nowadays. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's probably one of those that does better on streaming than it ever did in the theater. Well, I hear that in some places they like do performances with it. They play it in theaters, and there's like, audience participation and all kinds with of cosplay. Stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and all Mittens the people really, know the words. The, the the Dark Mittens fans are a small group, but hardcore dedicated. And it's yeah. like even though we weren't stars, we get to go and sign autographs at conventions now. You can even charge like five bucks. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like the hipster logic of stardom, right? You can't really be the star unless you, you know, take the side star position. Well, you were the not only actors. Star. You were the only actors who were playing roles in that movie. Um, oh yeah, and everybody. Well, and there were all those. There were all those. Uh, you know, random soldiers and stuff at the beginning that died. No, no, those were people who were actually murdered by ice monsters. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I told this was this is actually a found footage film of Keanu Reeves, Nancy Kerrigan, and Anthony Starr saving the world from an ancient Egyptian ice monster. Produced by Idris Elba, of course. What are what's his name? There is there is what's great for the franchise though is there is still a giant ice gremlin out there. 
uh, was oh, super man. stoned and hanging out with Keanu Reeves. I think he might actually live down the street from me. <laughs> the Ice Gremlin? <laughs> the Ice Gremlin, yeah. yeah. I mean, San Francisco is kind of a sanctuary city, so he... Well, you know. I know I know that he got one bit part on an episode of NCIS and hasn't really been able to find work since. So that's tough. Uh, he, man, I heard it's... that he auditioned for the role of Mister Freeze back in the Batman days, but Arnold, you know, Arnie totally beat him to it. You, you know, maybe maybe he'll be able to audition for the role of Mister Freeze coming up in the new franchise with Edward the Vampire Slayer in it. Oh yeah, Edward the Vampire Slayer. Uh, he kills vampires, I, right? I hear it's hard to be an ice gremlin in Hollywood these days. That like a lot of those ice gremlin roles go to non ice gremlin a- actors. Well, that's a frosted glass ceiling. They hit it every time. I just thought I thought it was because they were like, why would we pay actual ice uh, gremlins when we can just use CGI now? Mm. You know. Sure. I mean, and it's so much cheaper too because it takes a. Lo- I mean, ice gremlins do eat a lot. A lot and you have to prepare it just right so it's not too hot so you have to have a lot of liquid nitrogen around you also have to have some dead bodies it's just it's a big to do so cgi let's, does tend to be easier and let's face it being an ice gremlin in a state that's constantly on fire with wildfires isn't uh, an enjoyable it's not, place to be it's not ideal it's no. not ideal no, no. Yeah. i mean that's why that's why the ice gremlin acting market really took off in like uh Siberia, Reykjavik. Yeah, yeah, uh, Norway. Mm-hmm. I heard there's an awesome ice cream in theater and uh, the science research station on that continent on the South Pole. <laughs> <laughs> I ruined it. What yeah. is that? <laughs> uh, hey guys, have we to... have college degrees. We know the seven <laughs> continents. I have to. I have to correct you on something here just for Topher's sake, if he's really leveling up his character. It's actually three common, one rare. What? I looked I looked back at our chat, or three uncommon magical items, one rare. That's what okay. it said in our chat. Okay, okay. He only I was going to say because, because he only went to oh, one adventure. <laughs> oh, that, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, because I have, I, I, was, I was scared for a second because I was looking at my character sheet and I have adamantine plate, cloak of protection, and sentinel shield, and ring of protection is my rare. And I was like, ooh, did I take one uncommon magic item that I wasn't supposed to have? Uh, but so I look back at the chat and it was indeed three uncommon magical items, one rare each. Well, damn. Thank you for that. I don't, I don't know what it means when I'm asked, can I get a note file for the game, please? Note file? We we're supposed to take notes there, there have been no notes <laughs> notes are dumb unless you're talking about singing oh you mean in roll 20 it's like so, a blank handout yeah you can actually create a notes handout oh it can be edited by agnorak some mug It sounded like a demon. A demon can edit it? That's the name of his barbarian. Was oh, that's Agronac. right. Agronac Sumug. Got it. Not an actual Yeah, demon. there you go. I, I created a mysterious note and uh, gave you edit access to it. Does anyone else want a mysterious note? Sure. No, I have uh, I have one note for that kind of stuff. Yeah, me too. Yeah, but we we'll never find them. Windows. Mysterious. The problem is we never actually find them. The problem you know? is I take notes by hand too often and then forget to transfer them into OneNote instead um, of just taking them in OneNote to begin with. You need to take notes by hand on a tablet or something. I used to because I have a I have an iPad and I have an Apple Pencil. Um, I'm just not good at writing in the tablet with it. Ah. Uh. Or is the tablet not good at understanding your writing? Well, my right nobody is. No, there is nothing out there that's good at understanding my writing. I think Google just heard that and was like, challenge accepted. <laughs> the bots are like, analyzing Axiom's handwriting. 
Uh, my handwriting does not compute. Bad. Does not compute. Shutting you down. Guys, you guys could really use some sort of uh, dedicated magic user, I think. Like, we really could. Answer. We could use a dedicated yeah. magic user and also a cleric. <laughs> Yes. Or or a bard, a bard or a cleric would be fantastic. Yeah, a bard would probably be great because that's like a magic user and a cleric in one. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. I'm going to share with you a, 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 an example of my handwriting. Cool. It's not very clear. What we could, what we really need yes. is a celestial yes. warlock. There you go. Hi. Oh, I world's should... rule is saying hi to us. Hello! Hi, Royals Rule! Yeah! What a mess. If I hold my notebook up, I just disappear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not turning my background off. I don't want you guys to see my dirty bedroom. I'm not either. I'm just going to make you guys bigger on my screen. I won't have, uh, I won't have my new studio set up until after this four-day weekend. Really? Yeah. You get a new studio every. I'm building a new studio. That's Bought cool. all the stuff. Look, cool. here's an example of my artwork from like probably 15 years ago. Chaw. <laughs> Woo! I that's... can't get it to focus. There it is. Thank you, Royals Rule. I went to a web at the very beginning of the month. I searched for Halloween backgrounds and I found one that had 45 plus Halloween backgrounds. So every single day uh, in Teams, I've changed my background. I didn't change my background in Zoom because I only use it for this. So you can roll your HP, Topher. I always roll my HP. I do not. I always take you take the take the standard or whatever. I yes, do. any three uncommon items and any rare item. I don't give a patootie. Give a hootie patootie. The more OP you make your character, the more I will smack you down with loop gurus. <laughs> I mean, we failed colossally. <laughs> it was pretty bad. That's that's one of those one of those gamer philosophies. I've never understood DMs who are like really sticklers for uh like oh no, you can't do that. That's too powerful. Uh the first DM I really played seriously with for a long term, he was like you can do whatever you want within the rules, but remember if you start using a combo that I think is super powerful, so will the NPCs. <laughs> <laughs> Who said I was going for OP Topher? We've we we have read your chats about D and D. We know you're going for OP. You're yeah. playing a barbarian. You can't <laughs> be going for OP. Oh, oh. Mark, wait a minute. If, if you multi classes into Druid, he's about as OP as you can possibly get. But the uh, you have to be a prepared spellcasters, guys. Prepared spellcasters are exponentially more powerful than every other D&D class. They made it better in 5th Ed, but not quite good enough. I don't know, man. You can almost you can almost make a barbarian druid in 5th edition that is literally unkillable. Um, you can make a cleric in 5th edition D&D who's almost as much of a god as you can make a cleric in 3rd edition D&D. And you can literally make a cleric into a god in 3rd edition D&D. <laughs> Honestly, 5th Ed did a lot better with the balance, but there's still a, definitely a tier system to it. Um, it's The nature of how Dungeons & Dragons' core philosophy works is exponential spellcasters, linear fighters, linear combatants. Um, the subclasses and uh, class abilities have done a little bit better to bring those melee classes up and they've nerfed a lot of spells to bring the spellcasters down but there's definitely still a power discrepancy after about level 7 I can't be that big a nerd you should see how hot my wife is <laughs> Yeah, we're being called nerds in, in Axiom's chat over here Delson yeah, Sweet said, nerds that she still loves, but but still but nerds. Still nerds. <laughs> wow. You know what though? I proudly wear the nerd label. 
Yeah, I'm I'm okay with being a giant nerd. Me too. <laughs> I mean, they're giant nerds. <laughs> I don't know how you can get past it. I mean, just because I'm wearing a total broy polo shirt with apparently a sticker that says I'm COVID free on it. Oh, well, congrats on the sticker. Hey, thanks. I, I can wear a sticker that says I'm COVID free too. I know. And still be like wallowing in COVID. <laughs> I was just, I was sitting here going, you know, I have absolutely no defense against the nerddom. Um, I, I'm, I'm running a Dungeons and Dragons game on the internet. <laughs> For an audience? Talking about uh, the power dynamic in the mechanics. Mm -hmm. uh, earlier tonight, I was writing papers about business, eth business ethics. Yeah. Uh, not because anyone's requiring me to do so, but because I decided I wanted to get another degree for no career benefit at all whatsoever. Um, <laughs> that sounds like me. <laughs> this, this week I have purchased three textbooks that have nothing to do with any of the classes I'm studying. Okay. So uh, I'm a pretty giant nerd, yeah. I, in like every type of nerddom. I study cartoons. I should just get a, a, a sticker for my car that just says, I play games on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the least nerdy thing about me is my video games. Um, I only play one video game that is the most popular video game on the planet. Second most popular video game on the planet. What's the first? Yeah. Minecraft has sold like almost three times as many copies of, as... Uh, World of Warcraft guys. But they count all of those years that Minecraft was free as sales, and that doesn't count. <laughs> For anybody watching my stream, I am leveling my character and trying to decide which feat to take. I totally am not leveling my character. So Axiom, are you going to take another level of Warlock, or are you going to take another level of... Power? No, at this point, I'm actually thinking that um, other than snagging the level of Wizard later... Um, I'm probably going to go pretty much straight warlock down the rest of the tree. Wow. Um, I will. I may dip into a single level of wizard to unlock a few additional spell slots. Um, Honestly, but... that's that's. I think the aspect of this campaign I'm looking forward to the most is really fleshing out those uh, background orders. Like I've started to create this giant conglomerate of shadow people in my head for Windle. And uh, <laughs> yes, like obviously, I have to come up with these really great, like Bahamut controls you now, uh, but not Bahamut himself, but like a scion of Bahamut controls you because Bahamut doesn't give you warlock powers, some scion of Bahamut's giving you warlock powers. That's right, interesting. Well, that, that would be my assumption is that some celestial being that was uh in service. Uh, yeah, because Bahamut if, if be Bahamut giving was giving you powers, powers, you'd be a cleric. Right. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, that's true. I didn't think about that. Huh, I'll be darned. Yeah, it's, it's a celestial. He's, he's, he's attached to a celestial, so he can't be a guy. Maybe, a scion. maybe it's your celestial lizard giving you powers. I'm going to have to have to write up some what is going on there, what, what he's bound to. Some sort of draconic archon. Probably. I was gonna say, it, it, like the uh, if you look at the celestial stuff in the rule books, like even they're just super powerful beings. So even like unicorns, unicorns are considered a celestial being that can give, give you warlock powers. So I would assume that even stuff like elder gold dragons and platinum dragons may be able to qualify as beings that could grant you power. Yeah, I just, it, it's one of those things where as your story marshal, as your DM, I get to go down the rabbit hole and have fun writing that and creating that world building. Well, yeah. In fact, I might do some NaNoWriMo world building on this. Since NaNoWriMo is right around the corner. Dawson, ah. you're participating this year, right? I am going to try, yes. I think Axiom. I'm going to take... You gonna write, write 1,700 words a day through November? I don't write anymore, man. What? Nope. Don't do it. Lame. I've never, I've never really liked much that I wrote, uh, so I don't write anymore. So, oh. so Squig in Xanathar's Guide, there's actually a celestial path for warlocks, and it talks about like 
radiant they become radiant creatures and it's pretty cool so my speed is now 50. are you making your hp rolls in roll 20 tilver he is i see them i haven't been, i wasn't watching he gained 16 Yeesh. hps that and that's without his bonus hp from his con score and i can now move 160 feet per round wow yes that's one of my favorite things about monks is how fast they get i can also do that spring attack thing that you that they kind of got rid of um in th from third edition where i if i attack an enemy i can basically avoid uh, they, they don't get opportunity attacks against me for the rest of the turn oh nice see i don't know that i guess i i have a monk one monk character that is that high a level but i've only got to play him like one time you don't forget to add your con score, Topher. Uh, you're going to need to soak a lot of damage for this party. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we've got a pretty good tank. So, so no, barbarians okay. are tanks, though. That's like they're built for it. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, but they're a different type of tank. Like, yeah. I have a tank designed to not take damage. Topher's playing a tank designed to take damage. Yeah, he's designed to soak damage. He's a bear tank. Right. Bear, bear. Uh, essentially, yes. Topher's playing a bear tank, and I'm playing a paladin tank. I prefer paladins. Bears are too furry. <laughs> You're not They're into sweet, the furries. Though. I mean, I just have always liked a well-groomed, <laughs> manscaped paladin. <laughs> I just assume paladins are manscaped. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, the paladin you know is a dragonborn, so he doesn't have any hair at all. That's even better. Smooth from head to toe, except for the scales. Except but they're smooth the scales. scales. It's not. It's not like. Uh, I mean, have you guys touched lizards? Lizards aren't like <laughs> hard scales. They're they're soft and smooth scales. I prefer not but to touch. It's more dragony, so the scales are supposed to be harder, right? They're they're impenetrable, but you're still serpentine. Okay. Well, fair enough. Do you even get a natural armor bonus? Me? I'm pretty sure you're just skin with like a beak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm pretty sure you're like no. I, I'm pretty sure Dragonborn do not actually receive a natural armor bonus, which is odd to me because I'm, I think like lizard folk do. Wolves do. They have a DC an AC of 14 and it's natural armor. <laughs> I, wow. I know that from recently looking at it. <laughs> and you're not a nerd. I, no, I told you, I have no oh, no, defense. No. I am 100% He's totally a nerd. agreeing. He is a nerd. I know. I was just... We all are the nerds. I was just being silly. Nerdy God. as uh, Yeah. Do you guys want to have a detailed conversation about the cognitive development of ethics? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there are some things that you bring up that sound incredibly boring, and they generally are, but we know this one for sure is amazingly boring ah i think it's kind of interesting uh, okay so i'm uh, kidding oh my god uh, <laughs> but you want to talk rather, about this this paper that was printed recently in popular mechanics about how uh there might be someone has kind of proven that your consciousness exists as an electromagnetic field centered on your brain that does sound interesting to me and does he talk about time particles time elasticity around you not in this particular paper. Okay. This particular popular mechanic or science article. Popular I'm sorry, mechanic. Axiom. I cut you off while you were getting ready to talk about Dragonborn. Oh, no, it's okay. I was going to tell you, I looked it up. You do not get any bonus to your armor class, but your scales do provide you with damage resistance. Oh, to fire? Uh, well, to what? It depends on what type of dragon you are. Yeah. Uh, for In my case, yes, fire is. The, You're is, gold, right? Yes, I'm gold. Ooh. You had to be gold or bronze because you shot fire from your mouth. So, well, he could have been red. Could have been red. He is definitely a metallic dragon, right? and not, not, not bronze. Be a servant Brass. of Bahamut. Brass. Sorry, yeah. He would not be a he would not be a chromatic dragon who is a servant servant of Bahamut. I, well, okay, could be in your realm. It's different, but I'm a white dragon servant servant of Bahamut. A uh, white 
Dragon Born, which yeah, says nothing. Actually, uh, it says nothing it's, about it's, your alignment. Uh, according to that thing about Bahamut, I think it said that 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 Bahamut extended his followers during the time of troubles. Because used to be, if you were a chromatic dragon, you were usually on the side of uh, Tiamat. Yeah, T Tiamat is literally the goddess of chromatic dragons. Bahamut's one of Bahamut's godheads is the god of metallic dragons. Yes. Uh, if you were a paladin of Bahamut as a dragonborn, you would be cleansed of your chromatic darkness. Interesting. So, in, 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 if if I were to to have your character, Dalson, your your white dragonborn. Yes. Um, upon becoming a paladin of Bahamut, you would be cleansed into a silver dragonborn. Yes. Interesting. Because, well, the difference is with mine, I'm kind of an albino, and so I have lavender scales. I am totally building this this mythos as we go right now. That's beautiful. I have updated my friggin' character sheet so you can stop biatching now. Yay! I'm just kidding. God, I am kind of bitchy tonight, aren't I? Like, that's just my... a little. Just a little. What's going on there, guys? What did you do to me? Um, we put bitch in your water. <laughs> well, I'll be nice for the next six minutes. Wow, interesting. I so here you go. Thing. You might look at the Ux Bahamuti. They are powerful draconic humanoids created by Bahamut. Ooh. As you're you might look at them as the source of my yeah. I might check that out then. I'm gonna search for just talking. I actually, I, I might build music. more of the mythos around your order on the idea of Bahamut and his aspect as Marduk, slayer of Tiamat, creator of the world, bearer of the 52 names. Okay. You know, the guide from the book of dead names and all of the Lovecraftian lore. Ah, oh, okay. I don't, um, I haven't read you know, a lot of Lovecraft. The, the, the mythology created by the Mad Arab. Nope. What are you talking about? Okay, it makes so, sense with you being, okay. It, it makes sense with the fact that you're a warlock. <laughs> okay. If, if we were playing in Forgotten Realms, which I know, I know we're, we're really not. Um, Bahamut extended his worshiper, his following, after the time of troubles, uh, to include non dragons. Was... So I, 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 everything froze up for me there for a second. He extended it after the times of trouble, and then everything froze. Oh, uh, he also includes includes non dragons among his worshippers now. Yes. Oh. Because he's actually a member of the Feroni, Feirunian Parthenon now, where he was previously only a member of the Draconic Pantheon. That's very progressive of him, though, don't you think? Well, and so he should be cool with, you know... In 3rd Ed, there was actually uh, a, a prestige class dedicated to being, like, a paladin who served Bahamut. It was the... Uh, Purple knights or something. The purple knights were. They're uh, knights of uh, Cormier. Kingdom. Cormier. Yeah. Cormier. Yeah. yeah well, or they're anyway, actually anyway, they were called the purple dragons, I think. Anyway, in the the third ed dragon book, the Dra Draconomicon, which is not a three five book, it's three zero book. There's a prestige class dedicated to paladins that become servants of Muhammad. Maybe they're silver knights or something like that. But that's that's the prestige class, and they they have to be human is a requirement. I miss class. third edition so much. I wish it wow, was there's still. There's a lot of really cool stuff. Here. There was just so many cool prestige classes that I never got to be. Prestige classes were great. I like yeah. prestige classes. Of course, they removed prestige classes and just turned them into the, your like sub class or whatever that you take at third which, level, which really works better. That's true. It's just prestige classes were so fun. All you had to do was come up with a data table and like a couple of extra abilities. <laughs> That's true, but like uh, there's no reason for me to drop, you know, like the Eldritch Knight, right? 
okay. required you to take an equal number of fighter and wizard classes or sorcerer classes levels. Yeah. And the Did way you... it's done in fifth ed is actually handled so much better that it's a subclass of being a fighter. You get your fighter stuff and then you just get a limited spell casting abilities. It's such a better way to handle it. Did you also know though, this is a little known fact, the Eldritch Knight gets an ability score improvement every other level. What? Yes, and they gain one spellcaster level every other level. It's crazy. I'm seriously That's, considering it. That, that seems really insane. Yeah, they're, they look really fun. I am actually going to play the Critical Role Gunslinger in a one-shot that I'm doing. I looked at that class uh, next week for Venwaris. Did you? Yeah. It's it looks very fun. It's I wouldn't play it as a campaign player, I don't think, because I'm just not into that kind of chaos. Um, it, you can misfire soups easy yeah. on I your really, gunshots. I really like the artificer yes. uh, revamp for fifth ed. Actually, I, I like Eberron it, as a campaign setting. I've never played in it. I I've actually never run a too. game in it. Um, but I really like the flavor of the artificer for fifth ed with the the boomstick and the oh yeah. Um, it, it feels like they really made that that class feel like an Eberron class rather than just like a super overly powerful spellcaster class like it was in 3.5. <laughs> oh, yeah. For sure. Um, I don't I don't know how to do this. Hold on. Oh, no. I want to drop oh, free. Man. So get this. You got me really hooked on reading this Bahamas stuff. So Bahamut does not oppose dragons collecting a horde, right? Yeah. As long as they don't do anything shady to build that horde. So they have to come about that their horde through legitimate means. Like, you know, starting an Amazon business or, um, you know... Uh, Getting them biddies on Twitch. Yes. They're pimping out the ladies or something. Uh, legitimate businesses like that. However, get this. You cannot commit questionable acts in uh, because of greed. And you can't be subdued either voluntarily or by force. Or uh, Bahamut will no longer give you his favor. Because he believes in winners. <laughs> but he also believes that, he, that fighting should be a last resort. That's what I've learned here too. He he definitely believes in uh, trying to talk it out first. So the next time you come across a woman who's managed to almost get out of her shackles and is crumpled up in a ball on the floor, maybe don't punch her in the face a bunch of times just for laying there. I'm pretty sure I did. <laughs> you didn't, but Shady Halfling did. Hey, well, he I might as well be a Shady Moogle. Halfling. <laughs> Dude. He might as well be a Moogle. Dude. She was an enemy, and I could tell it. I could smell it on her breath. Also, look at the roll 20, apparently. Look at the roll 20. What am I looking at? Um, hey, look at me. Hey, yo. What am I looking at, Delson? Oh, my God. Hey, left. Look left. Oh, it's midnight. Oh. <laughs> Are you guys blind? I told you I'd be nice for six minutes. Six minutes has passed. Midnight. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, I oh get what it. am I missing? Uh, out of here. Uh, oh, hey. Tinker, thank you very much. That's eight months. Thank you for the resub. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah, Tinker, thank you. That's I'm going to say thank you on Axiom's behalf. That's legitimate money making, Axiom. Bahamut won't spite you for that. Nope. That's right. Well, you were not you know subdued. And if, uh, <laughs> I I got a resub on a night that we played D and D. That's pretty good because usually D and D nights have got like two viewers. We have a we have a quite a quite a great chat going on with the D and D night tonight. So yeah, thank we, you guys for coming out and watching us play D and D. We'll probably do this again at some point in the future. Yeah, man. Um, I would say we'll least, definitely do this again. It's not yeah, like at least the very the very longest we will go without playing a role playing game for you again is next October, when we will <laughs> definitely play Dark Mittens Three. The title to be determined. The the, <laughs> the mittening. The mittening. Starts Friday. Theaters everywhere. Dark Mittens Three.
cat scratch fever. Oh. This Halloween, <laughs> the darkest cat <laughs> Topher, Topher, gets Topher the Topher cream. Bad. Topher feels bad that he didn't tell you about the warning because he was working on his character and lost track of time. <laughs> oh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got you covered. I got you. I, we should probably we should probably start wrapping it up then. I'm going to real quick uh, remind anybody who's in the stream, um, it, and you know I'll take this opportunity to, to you know, like promote myself on Delson's stream. Uh, yes. If you are interested in horror films and you would like to join us for some scary movies, tomorrow night we're having a movie party over here on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Axiom X I I I. That's Axiom X the third. And we will be watching uh, beginning at 8 p.m. Central Time. Or, sorry, the stream will begin at 8 p.m. Central Time. The movie will start at 8.30 p.m. Uh, we will be watching back to back uh, Midsummer and Hereditary. I love Shakespeare. Yes, that's exactly what it will be. So if you love Shakespeare, tune in. I guarantee it will be uh, about as frightening as high school Shakespeare. <laughs> well, that's terrifying then. <laughs> so I'm going to pet myself on your stream and Delson's stream. Uh, I'm M.A. Brotherton. I don't really have anywhere to send you other than Twitter and Instagram. But if you like cartoons, nerdy adult stuff, not adult. St uh, that's not a good way to put that. Like nerdy <laughs> crap, not. Learning about the world and just uh, making yourself a better human being. Why don't you go ahead and follow me on Twitter and Instagram right now? You're just going to get nothing but jokes about pizza rolls and just minor rants about politics. But I do draw cartoons and I will be becoming much more available to the public uh, once I finish grad school, so. <laughs> Are you gonna tell them where to follow you? I did, at M.A. Brotherton on Twitter or Oh, Instagram. I didn't hear you say that part. I didn't hear you say the at M.A. Brotherton part. Yeah, M.A. Brotherton on, on any platform, basically. I own them all. Wow. Or M.A. Brotherton.com, the website that hasn't been updated in over a year. Uh, and I am Delson. And you can find me at the real Delson on Twitter and Delson.Beyond on Instagram. I don't really do Facebook anymore because I disbelieve the illusion. But uh, if you <laughs> have failed your saving throw, you can find me there at Delson.Beyond. I'm just kidding. I just del It's just not very accessible for blind people. Um, I guess I could make it more accessible. Anyway, uh, I will be streaming quite a bit more towards the end of the year. Uh, hopefully, assuming all goes well. I don't think there will be much in my way after a bit, but um, we'll see. And uh, in the meantime, my my besties here are really good for um, emotional support, for creative inspiration, and just a really good, comfortable time. So spend time with them on their streams and checking out their Twitters. I highly endorse them. Aww. Oh, and if you messy. want to talk to us outside of those places, you can usually find us in Axiom's chat Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. to 11 to midnight central. Right? 7? No, 9, 9 p.m. 9, 9 p.m. Central. central to Sorry, midnight. it's 8 p.m. my time. Yeah. It, tomorrow night's a special exception because we're doing two movies back to back and Midsummer's like two hours and 20 minutes long. And I'll just, I'll be here to say, give him the middies. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> all right uh well guys thank you very much for the game yeah thank, thank you guys, guys very yeah, much i really, enjoyed, I really enjoyed myself all right and we will uh hope we'll talk off stream uh we'll plan to get something together uh i'm thinking before the end of november we'll we'll get another game going i don't know we'll see what you guys think anyway uh i'm gonna go ahead and say good night uh to everybody in chat thank you very much for watching and until next time, stay sharp and be excellent to each other. Thanks for watching, Delson, Axiom Zai, and Mab. Well played, everybody. <laughs>